Inside Foos presents Foos Talk Live. It's going to be an intensely competitive event that goes down to the probably the very last match on the very last day is going to decide who wins the big prize. It's Foos Talk Live. Are you talking to me? Compelling and lively banter. Are you going to talk to us? Talking foosball. Foosball was how I measured my value as a man. You took that away. Players and fans, promoters and pros, unedited and raw. Talk, talk, talk. Living in the moment. We have a lot of important things to talk about. All while practicing social distancing. Cool. We'll talk. No big whoop. Let's get this thing started. Foos Talk Live. Welcome to the 93rd episode of Foos Talk Live where we are about to break all the rules. Hey there, it's Tom Robinson with Mark Torres and Adam Gilson for a free-for-all Thunderdome throwdown edition of Foos Talk Live. Brought to you in part by InsideFoos.com, offering monthly subscriptions with access to some of the most exciting matches ever recorded. Plus, live tournaments, pre- and post-show analysis, interviews, and original programming. Sign up now at InsideFoos.com. Also brought to you by ProtectoFlex, the world's premier foosball safety accessory. Go to Protecto-Flex.com. Brought to you by Rodlock. Practice more, reach less. The best practice tool in foosball. Visit Rod-Lock.com. Also brought to you by 518 Prints, one of the best printers of promotional items and foosball apparel. Visit 518prints.com. Brought to you by Foosballers the Movie. This Joe Hassling a Foosball documentary is now available as a worldwide download at foosballersthemovie.com. Also brought to you by the USTSO, helping to usher in a new era of competitive foosball. Become a member at usafoosball.com. And brought to you by Foosball Clubs USA, promoting foosball through school systems all over the United States. Make a donation today at foosballclubsusa.com. The Thunderdome Limited Championship is returning after 18 years. This time, the battleground is Pompano Beach, Florida, February 18th through the 20th. Experts, amateurs, rookies, and beginners battle through four events to find out who has what it takes to be victorious. Tonight, we meet some of the foosball gladiators who have the steel and the will to be a part of Thunderdome. Ooh, I like that. I think that uh, we're going to have some fun tonight. Mark and Adam, are you guys here? Are you, are you present and accounted for? Dude, I'm so fired up after that <laughs> uh, intro that I want to put on a mustache and shave my head and show up as a beginner at this event. Oh, that's what I want to do. Do you think that's what it would take? Uh, I still wouldn't win it, but it would be cool no. to take it. But he'd, he'd have a shaved head, so yeah, and a mustache. <laughs> yeah, that. So that's that's a good look for you. No, I'm, I'm I'm as pumped up as you know. I'm so pumped up. I lifted up my house and swept under it. Oh, during that intro, man, because I wanted to do a little clean. Yeah, I'm excited. Well, he has I miniatures. Would, he he has right. a thing for me, like miniature mice. I do. I do. Them and, yeah, but <laughs> I'll tell you how pumped up I. I'm so, so pumped weird. up. I want to shave Mark's head. That's how pumped up I am. Let's do Can this. I tell you? Let me tell you how pumped up Adam is. This is absolute God's honest truth. When Adam found out we were doing this event, he bought a plane ticket like that day. That he bought day. a plane ticket. Yeah. He knew he couldn't. Yeah, he knew he couldn't play in it, and right. he knew he was just. He didn't even know if Inside Foods was going to be there. But he played yeah. in this event. He won this event 18 years ago. He knows how badass it is. Yep. That's yeah. why he's he yeah. bought a plane ticket. He's like, I don't okay. even care if Inside Foods going to be there. He knows. He knows how awesome this event is. Yeah, he this knows. is this ultimate spectator uh thing and i don't i mean we've got some people coming on we've got these uh, competitors that are coming up in a little bit here yes. to talk about it but i don't think anybody really knows because i i mean we were there mark was there i was there back mm -hmm. back in the, the 18 years ago and uh but and, and that's all great but i'm extrapolating forward now into the 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 the, the reality we live in with social media and the, how inside foos is present yes. be there showing this yeah. this is going to be something this is going to be something that's utterly and completely different than I think the majority of the people that are playing in it have have, have experienced. And as I said on our show last week, um, I won more because I won it the last time that I played it, the 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 the, uh, the King of the Hill oh, version. Yeah. King of the Hill, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I won more in that one tournament that I did the entire next year on tour, and I was doing well on tour. Man. So this is just this is going to be bringing a, a level of pressure and a level of 
of, of, of looking at foosball in a way that could be done differently than how it has been done. Mark, if you could speak to that. Oh my gosh. So in, in brief, when we did this event, I designed this event in 01 and I started going through it in like 02. We had our first event in 02 and then 03 and 04. And the the only reason why the event didn't persist back then is because my career was different. I have a my job was not going to allow me to promote foosball. This it was it was radically different back then, 18, 19 years ago. And here's a big difference back then, even though it was radically different. There was no Facebook. It was like maybe there was a Facebook. I don't think there was, like oh three, right? Was Facebook even a thing? I think people were using a MySpace back then, but it was not anywhere near <laughs> the social media influence and uh, power. And so here we are basically 20 years later, frankly, and we have, uh, we have uh, our foosball community by the thousands is on social media. We've been able to, back then I had to call Tommy Atticus and say, hey, Tommy, we're having this event. You got to pay 400 bucks to get in. It's just going to be masters and pros. I had to call Adam Gilson and say, hey, Adam, I think it was two, I think it was 250. Uh, that, that, that sounds about right. Or 325, yeah. I think was what we had. No, was, yeah. was right, right there. I, I had to call them on the phone and there was like a little bit of an and point being this. It's been easy to market this event. It's been easy to capture the imagination of the foosball community. And they understand that they're, uh, I, I have total props for everyone on the phone and the other 50 some competitors that are already signed up pre-registered because they know they're pioneering something radically different and they're not afraid. And they're jumping out in the open space with a lot of money to win a lot of money. And it is going to change foosball. I assure you, I've talked to seven promoters in the last week Foosball is going is absolutely disrupted in the best of ways. It is going to change forever. These events aren't going anywhere. We're going to see them, the format, everything. So I, I don't I don't want to spend too much time sucking all the oxygen out of the air. We got so many great people, but to your point, Adam, foosball is not going to be the same after this tournament. Yeah, yeah this absolutely. is uh, this is the expectation is just uh, overwhelming. You know, before we get down to business, I just want to let let uh, our foos talk live uh, listeners know that this week we're uh, foregoing most, if not all, of our uh, normal features including the IPA of the week and the honor group and, of course, the flashback. But this, of course, uh, we, we wanted to give time out for uh, for uh, our, uh, well, our co-host, Jim, Jim Stevens. Of course, he's taking this time off to, to celebrate his birthday. Uh, he has the unmitigated audacity to celebrate another birthday. Can you imagine? <laughs> And so before we get down to business here, I think it's only fair that uh, we celebrate Jim's birthday. What do you guys say? Sounds good. Yeah. All right, here we go. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Oh yes, it's to you happy birthday to you all right all right <laughs> what's that where did you get all that from oh, that was, was like... something i had laying around just you know stuff <laughs> yeah just you know what that reminded around. me of that reminded me of that evolution of dance video like, oh yeah evolution of, <laughs> evolution of uh, happy birthday that was great i was touched well, Clay, am I understanding I'm correctly that I went out and got an IPA for the first time in my <laughs> you life? Did. You did. You did. Seriously? To drink oh, that trash he did not. on the air. Dude, oh, he liar. ate a ham sandwich. He doesn't care about IPA. Well, okay. Bye. Clay, just for you, I'm, I'm, putting, I'm putting on my clown shoes, uh, All right. which is one of my favorite wow. IPAs. So, yeah, I'm That's actually cool. I'm violating the law tonight by uh, having mm. this, this IPA. Weird. That's for Clay. Clown Laws shoes. are so subjective anyway. What did you get at? Yeah. Clay, what are you drinking for Jim's birthday? I'm all subjective. I'm drinking um I'm drinking your analysis. I don't <laughs> what? know. What? Yeah. I don't know what to say. Yeah. I was not prepared beyond the original joke. Uh, <laughs> uh, you didn't really I'm drinking the mute button. I'm actually all drinking the pain <laughs> of of being a Cowboys fan. Oh, I heard. Yeah. I heard. Yeah. Wow. And sorry. We can, we yeah. can let that be the end of that conversation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's, all I heard was urine. He said, what are you drinking? Yeah. He said, urine. Weird. Your analysis. 
Your oh, your anal- your your analysis. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. see. Yeah, it's yeah. it's it's a guy named Al and his and his sister. So it's oh, <laughs> you know if if Jim were here, he'd say take oh, control God. of the show, Tom. <laughs> exactly. Jim does that a lot. I was listening to some of the ap- episodes the other day, and, yeah. and Jim, uh, it's a new drinking game that I was going to suggest. Funny you mentioned that. <laughs> I, I swear, I wrote this down to bring up as a joke tonight. To, if, to, if moving forward without telling him a yeah. drinking game to take a shot every time somebody every time some every time jim says something to the effect of okay tom take the reins back or <laughs> yeah. okay let me try to get this show back on the rails here or anything that that, that is basically what the librarian was saying. that's uh, uh yeah. it's, it's spoken more often when mark is on the show Let's put it yeah, everybody. It doesn't matter who yeah, it is. Yeah. He probably—I bet he would say that in the drive-through at Taco Bell if they asked too many questions or made too many jokes. Okay, Taco Bell, let's get this show back on the road. I want a number three with no tomatoes. I know. Yeah. Why, why? Why so many sauce options? Just come on. Why? Yeah. Right? yeah. Why so many? What's the deal? <laughs> <laughs> I have hot sauce and I have fire sauce. Isn't oh. fire also hot? I don't know. <laughs> You, you know what, Clay? I, you do an okay sign call. I would have thought you would have done a much better gym. What are you talking uh, about? I don't, I don't, I don't do gym because it's acts probably too real that it, it <laughs> might come across as as uh, offensive. Can can we please get this underway? What are you talking can someone, about? Some, can someone take control of the show? Yeah, Tom, can yeah, you Tom. please take take control all right, back over right, the yes, show? Please. Uh, sorry, just my Jerry just escaped there for a second uh no <laughs> yeah good. The, yeah so this is all about the thunderdome of course this uh, this episode <laughs> and just to let you know we have uh, seven guests lined up are all going to join us and uh, talk about seven. this uh, yes yeah, seven seven key right. key players uh many of which you i'm sure you you're very familiar with and uh they're they're going to let us know what uh, what this means to them of course and what this is all about and how different this is going to be but uh, looking forward to that guys before we dive into the into our guests uh, any more uh comments about thunderdome um, can, you know, I like it? can i play you? Is... yeah go ahead okay. we got, bro. sweet awesome yeah I mean, like me personally, can I play? Oh, can you play? Well, there's a pro sure. master version. Sweet. There's gonna be Good. there's gonna be some gunslingers in there though. I've talked to them, so right, cool. bring your A game, brother. Uh, bring my B, B game, actually. I love that. Right. I yeah, love that, that term gunslinger. That's that is uh, that's kind of a neat euphemism when it comes to uh, some of these uh, players. Uh, now, what is it? Tommy Atkinson is considered a gunslinger, correct? Yeah, two like two guns. That's right. He's got two. two. Gun. Yeah, two guns. Right. Yeah, yeah. The the gunslingers, in my opinion, are the masters that are champions, and they somehow figure out something to get past four four and get that fifth point. There's not a ton of them, but uh, they're they're out there, and they're all they all want to play this event. Okay, okay. Yep. Well, you know, they're coming from all over the country, and uh, I think it's it's only appropriate that we mention the states that people are coming from as well. We've got everything from Florida, California, uh, Chicago, Illinois, Tennessee, Oklahoma. I mean, you know tons and tons of folks but We've got 13 uh, states 13 and canada and canada too that's right mm-hmm. canada too uh thank goodness covid yeah. is no longer an issue there so they can cross the border that uh that's good to hear but uh so what do you say we start with our, our very first guest and in fact we've got to make this official so uh if you'll stand by for a second for me and now from the state of oklahoma please welcome to freeze talk live Hey, gang. Thanks for having me back on the show. Yeah, it's been a while. We, we, we've missed you. Thanks. Oh, shucks. Hey, and I want to tell Jim uh, happy birthday as well. I'm sure he's having a great time with uh, his family and Amy, and, oh, and yeah. hopefully he's being uh, celebrated well. So happy birthday, Jim. Cheers to Jim. He won't hear that. He doesn't listen. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he has withdrawals though. He has withdrawals. <laughs> so, what's a good word, Liz? How's, how's your uh, your new year going so far? Um, well, it's it's going pretty good. It, it started out a little bit rough. Our household was uh was uh, uh overtaken by the COVID virus round two. Mm, we gosh. we're all fine. Uh, we all survived. Pretty mild symptoms. Um couple of my kiddos had COVID and strep at the same time, but uh, that's all behind us now. So the rest of the year looks uh, pretty bright. <laughs> cool. Okay. It can only get better from here, I guess, right? Exactly. Exactly. Wow. 
So, uh, Mark, Adam, I mean, you guys uh, know this very, very well. And uh, how do you think you're going to contend when it comes to the Thunderdome? I got a comment and a question. First of all, I said this to Liz the first time I talked to her about this event. And she's a wicked threat to win the whole thing. Mm. I've seen the I've seen the list of players, and no disrespect, there's a there's a lot of good players coming to this event from all over the place. Good, solid, tenured experts, um, new experts. There's a, a rookie, I think. I think he's a rookie. He's on the call now, who's got phenomenal results. But I don't think anyone. And by the way, I think I'm pretty sure Liz is the only Hall of Famer that's going to be in the in the roster. And no one, I don't believe anyone is as battle tested of the 64 as Liz. So Liz, I got to ask you, does that put a little more pressure on you? How do you, how does that frame your mentality coming into an event like this where you're battling with 63 other people? Kathy Atkinson is your partner and she's probably one of your top competitors in there too. How do you feel about coming into this event with kind of a target on your back, being a Hall of Famer and a world champion? Uh, well, you know, I think I think I feel the same as going into any other tournament. I mean, it is a little bit more exciting because it is so different. Um, but you know, I'm I'm smart enough to know that with this kind of format and with competitors like Ethan, I know Ethan, I know how he plays and how eager eager he is. Um, you know, it's you have to you have to come at it like okay, any anybody can win this, but it's it's basically going to come come down to um, you know how each event goes. I'm going to play my heart out. Do I think I can win? Absolutely. But can somebody else win? Of course. Uh, but that's what makes this exciting and fun. I mean, with a little bit of luck and, and four good um, draws and or three good draws, one bring. Wait a minute. There's a singles involved. I guess I have yep, to turn right. myself, yep. too. So, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's exciting. And, and you know, of course, I'm going to bring my game. I also am going to bring my fun. Um, I want to have fun while I'm playing foosball, and I intend to do that as well. So. Um, I'm going to give it all I have. Absolutely. Let me, let me segue before we get to Adam, because you're one of the few, I mean, there might be other people on the phone that have, uh, are on the call in the, in the room now that have experience playing Swiss formats. It, it's, it's um, not prevalent on the major tournament scene, but now the locals are starting to have Swiss formats with the draw your partners. You have years of it playing world cup events. Can you speak yeah. to a little bit about the Swiss format and what it, uh, what you think of it and how you think it plays into this event? Sure. I mean, the first thing that's cool about it is you get to play a lot of foosball. Um, the second cool thing about Swiss format is you know exactly when you're going to play. You're not going to do any hurry up and wait. Um, if you do have wait times, they will be minimal. Um, the third cool thing about it is, is you know, and I'm assuming you guys are doing a qualifying round of some kind where you can see where you st- where your standings are after X amount of rounds. Um, right. So. I'll share a story about World Cup in 2019, the most recent one that we had. Um, I did uh, a qualifying round in singles. And somehow, I don't know how this happened, I managed to qualify first. And, you know, you're thinking, all right, I'm, I'm you know, in a good place and I'm going to kick butt in this tournament. And I ended up going out right right off the bat. So just because you qualify high doesn't mean you're out of the tournament, you know? Um, and then the first time I ever went to a World Cup um, in 2010, I believe it was, uh, something like that, uh, Christina and I qualified in women's doubles and we qualified kind of in the lower part of the pack. Uh, and we ended up making it uh, all the way to third place. So, um, you know, all those things are exciting. Uh, just because you have a couple of bad rounds doesn't mean you're out of it. You know, you can be top of the top of the gang and, and you might end up in last place. So uh, there's there's a lot of uh, unknowns, which makes it exciting. Yeah, no, I, I'm, uh, that's awesome. And Liz, you know, I've, I've, I've gotten to know you this past year and it's been a lot of fun watching you play and compete. And I'm just curious. Um, you played in some big matches. You played in some big tournaments, um, but this amount of money um, is a is a boatload of money. What's that? Is, does that factor into anything for you, or is it just another day at the office? Yeah, I think it definitely does. Um, you know, it's always nice to win money. I can't. The last time I remember, um, you know, making money consistently on tour was actually in the nineties. Um, I haven't. Um, done that since even even on at good tournaments um, I think I had a, a year in 2012 where Christina and I won like every women's doubles that year and I was also placing well in singles and in mix and it was like impossible to break even um, so leaving the state of Florida 
which is the state that I love, and also coming home from a tournament with the potential of making money is absolutely motivating. It's quite exciting, actually. <laughs> So Liz, uh, when it comes to the the tournament, there's the way it's timed out. It's uh, there's well, there's extra time to do other things besides play foosball, like beach time. Are you looking forward to that? Absolutely. I mean, it's it's cold here in Oklahoma, not as cold as where you're at, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> but um, <laughs> you know, it is it is it is going to be nice to have some downtime. I mean. I'd like to go to the beach, but if I don't make it, that's all right. I'm, I'm in Florida a lot. Um, my main focus is going to be competition um, with, with some fun mixed in. So if that includes a little bit of a tan line, I'll, I'm definitely going to do that as well. So when was the last time you went to a tournament and uh, were able to know exactly when things were going to begin and end and, uh, and uh, count on enough sleep? Uh, the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, that would be that would be World Cup in Spain in 2019. Right, got it. Yeah, I think that uh, that feature is nicely uh, nicely added to this particular type of competition because it is so intense. It's nice to know you're going to have that uh, specific break each each and every night. Yes. Well, absolutely. Uh, Mark, Adam, um, any uh, any other uh, things you'd like to throw at Liz? Yeah, I got one more question for you, Liz. I'm, I'm trying to remember all the teams in my head right now, but I think it's some um, Charlotte, I'm sorry, the women teams rather, Charlotte Ellis, and I think Dana Brewer, and then uh, I think Maggie's playing with Daphne. Um, you're playing with Kathy Atkinson, and I don't know if there's a mixed team or not, but there's, I got to ask you this question. The format is unique. I think that Kathy Atkinson, is she playing goalie for you, by the way? Um, well, that that depends. You know, if if any of you know anything about Kathy Atkinson, she is a world champion. She yes, has wicked. a beast like forward game. If you were to just watch um, her yeah. hands and the ball movement, you would never know it was a, a lady player. Um, and she's also an excellent goalie. So, you know, we're we're going to just kind of play it one match at a time. We do have a strategy where I will will likely start up front. Um, but uh, switchability is something that we have going for us um, as as well as our long, long time playing experience. So uh, that's that's what we plan on doing. Yeah, that was my question. I, and uh, I'll just say this before we move on. Between Kathy's a beast. Kathy's an absolute animal. She was one of the best women forwards when she was peaking. Uh, was it was 10, 15 years ago. She was peaking. She was wicked good you cannot tell and the great equalizer in this event before we move on is that you're going to have a lot of beginners amateurs and um even experts that have never played with this kind of stress uh with the, for this kind of money for sure a lot of you guys haven't played for five to seven thousand dollars in a long time if ever so the equalizer is going to be you, you got a great guy expert in front of you who's never played with this type of stress and you kathy have been around for a long time i think it's going to be incredible to watch you guys play so, well, that's you. that's the one the one advantage I think we do have is is the stress is just not going to be there as much as it, it would be for a beginner player. But, you know, I mean, and, and not that I want to give my competition advice, but, you know, the best thing they could do is just go in there and just light it up and, and you know, look at the naked audience. Just don't stress about it. And mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because, um, you know, w as pro players, uh, women players pro players and male pro players too you know when you're playing against uh rookies and amateurs uh that is what they have going for them is is the let it fly and 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 um there's there's just a different playing level and sometimes we we aren't used to that and and that could be an advantage to the lower ranked player so so that's something that you know kathy and i and other experienced players are just going to have to keep our eyes out um on these other players who who may not have that experience we have to to remember that that um, we have to bring it down a little bit. You know, we're not playing against uh, or having to block like Blake or Tommy or, uh, you know, some of the Tony. high ranked yeah. players that we have to block a lot when we're playing like mixed doubles or other open events that, you know, we need to bring it down a little bit. I like the sage advice, the sage advice. What I do when I'm in front of a big crowd ready to speak, I imagine them <laughs> imagining me naked. When you imagine them imagining you naked, it just calms you down. You feel like you're in your groove, whoa, 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 and everything whoa. just everything's just great. Hey, Guys, I gotta go. I gotta go walk into the ocean. Um, <laughs> I'll see you later. <laughs> I think it's time to move on from Liz now. I think yeah. Liz is taking control. Tom. <laughs> okay, Adam, you have you have uh, 
anything else you'd like to add besides walking? Uh, no, I, I want to come. I want to come back to it. I, yeah, I, I, yeah. I want. The, I want the whole party to show yes. up, and then I want to. Yeah, I got yeah. Some things. We will come back. But to yeah, Liz, but thanks, for sure. Liz. Yes, thank you, thank you, Liz. Absolutely. And, thanks for having me. I'll see you guys in Pompano Beach. Oh, yeah. Don't go anywhere. Don't, don't leave. Yeah, you stay right okay. there. Okay, we're still here. I'm hanging. Yeah, I'm hanging. Got some more questions. Absolutely. But our 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 next gladiator. All the way from the great state of Tennessee, uh, please welcome to Foostalk Live in the Thunderdome edition, Maggie Strong. Maggie, are you with us? I'm here. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for being here. Uh, now, have you ever heard of such a thing as Thunderdome? And, and uh, what do you think to well, what do you expect about this uh, this uh, event? Um, I have not heard um, anything about it. When my husband watched the commercial or promo, whatever it was. He immediately said, oh, my gosh, I would love to come watch you play in that. And so he's somewhat familiar with the format of maybe in a different sport, not maybe foosball. But um, so he's actually coming with me to this tournament, which is exciting. And, um, you know, Florida has not disappointed, you know, me so far. I went to the the beach beat down last year. Mm -hmm. That was probably the funnest tournament that I went to all year long. Cool. And um, I love that. I love the limited players. I think that it it does allow you know the flow to happen a little um, easier and and keeps the competition close. I like that. So Maggie, give us an idea. How many years have you been playing foosball now? Oh my goodness. Um, well, my my first remembrance of a foosball table was probably when I was five or six. I remember just reaching up, you know, and you know grabbing hold of the rods and playing, and then grew up in skating rinks and under twenty one clubs mm. and. Played my whole life, um, had a table at a very, very young age. My dad owned a car lot, and he would actually bet cars that if he could get his 10-year-old daughter down here, if you could beat her in foosball, you can have the car. So he'd wake Whoa. me up, and I'd go, to, yeah, wow. I'd go down and play. And um, But, you know, I got into my teenage years, and there was no competition because I wasn't allowed to go into the bar, so I pretty much gave it up. And then um, in 1995, I was 21 years old, and I found the local foosball tournaments um, in Indianapolis is where I'm originally from. and went in and was awed at there, that there were tournaments, there were people, you know, playing again. And well, again, I had, I had lost touch, but, um, and then, so in 1995, I played locally in Indianapolis and then found out about the tour. And in 1996, I went to my first um, tournament in Kentucky and cool. then found out about the world championships in Texas. And that's where I went and competed, you know, um, at my first world and won, women's rookie singles and awesome. women rookie doubles and wow. second in rookie mix. Sweet. But to Liz's, awesome. to Liz's plug at the beginning, <laughs> you know, I'd, I had grown up in foosball hearing of this fabulous Liz, you know, and, and not really knowing who she was or anything, you know, uh, first round of women's open singles. Um, she came in and, and I played her and actually beat her first wow. round of the world at my nice. very first tournament. This is my fame. It's my only fame story. Wow. I have. It's amazing. Now, she, she did what she was supposed to do and came back and beat me, you know, obviously to get into the top three. So, but I did take, I wind up taking fifth at the world's as a rookie. And that was a, that was a pretty good accomplishment, I think. And then my better foosball years were obviously in the nineties. Um, then I had a son and kind of was off and on on the tour, but now he's 21 and I'm back. And, and I feel like being an older player, I don't know if anybody else feels this way, but I feel like mentally, you know, I'm stronger mm -hmm. as a, as a player. And, um, now I just have to get the, the physical piece to line back up and I'm excited. It's going to be a fun year. Yeah, absolutely. That's great. That's an amazing story. I love that story. Um, you know, there's karaoke on Friday night. The rumor is there's karaoke on Friday night. <laughs> uh oh. So, oh my word. Be, I always say I'm a much better singer than I am foosball player. Hands down. <laughs> you know, you are, you're an amazing <laughs> singer. You crushed. I was like, what the hell is going on here? It was stunning. I mean, this is we're talking about. Um, it was Texas State, right? It's Texas State. Or what, which which tournament was it that you were singing? There was a few of them. I can't. Yeah. Remember. Oh I think my god. There was no, no. It was, it was Bardo, Bardo and yeah. Yes, Bardo. Um, uh, who are you playing with, Maggie? I don't have the list in front of me. I'm playing with Daphne. Daphne. That's right. I'm, I'm sorry. Daphne. I said I said yeah. it earlier in the broadcast. Uh, how do you how do you feel? You to me. Here's a question. So there's um. There's, I think, five women players. Uh, there's six women players. How do you, you know, the field? So it's you, Daphne, Charlotte, Dana Brewer, Kathy, and Liz. How do you feel you match up? And I think some of the strongest competitors are amongst the women players. I think between you 
and Liz and Kathy, you guys are dangerous competition. How do you feel like you match up against Kathy and Liz right now? You know, I joked because I went after her in this, you know, in this interview, I'm always sucking up to Liz, but, um, you know, I have, I have such, such respect and honor for these women that have put, I feel like they have put way more time into this game than I have. And they have stuck with it a lot more than I have. I have been very off and on with foosball. I never really stuck in there for long stretches of time. But as far as, you know, I'm a little bit opposite of, of Liz and, and Kathy's strategy in the fact that I like playing with a goalie that I know is staying in the goalie. I'm not going to bring Daphne up, you know, mm -hmm. really under any circumstances, because it, I have to have someone back there that I, I know makes me want to stay up front because it makes me produce the results that I need to produce. If I've got a strong goalie, if, you know, if, if I got another strong forward back there, I feel myself kind of let myself off the hook and well, maybe you just get up there and try. And, and, um, and, and it, I feel like it kind of hinders my game, but with a, with a, with a strong goalie back there, it forces me to do what I know I can do. Cause I believe this game is all about the civil war and it's the war within your, you know, inside mm -hmm. yourself. You're only competing mm -hmm. against yourself. Mm -hmm. Every single person on this chat right now would say if they, if they did exactly what they know they could do, they could be anybody at any time. And that's, you know, that's the mindset. So it's really just the civil war that you have to win. So I'm excited. That. I think it's going to be fun. Yeah, Maggie, that's, that's awesome. I'm uh, you. So Maggie, I don't think that I met you and I have a very weird question for you. Um, so um, you were at Worlds or Tornado Championships last year, right? Yes. Did I bump into you once like a hundred times while trying to walk by you in the pit area? Was that uh, you? Do you remember I, this? Because I, 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 there was like one person I, I, and I forgot who it was. I thought it was maybe you now that I hear your voice because I remember you, somebody, it sounded like you kept saying very politely, no, that's fine. And then, and then jokingly talk shit about me when, when I left. <laughs> And oh, I didn't that know. was definitely not me. That was definitely okay. not me. Okay, okay. I didn't know. I, you I know, know what? That that lived up to the uh, to the weird question qualifiers. So thank you for that, Adam. Yes, thank you. Was that weird? Ding, 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 ding. That was, I don't know. That was so bizarre. It's fine. No. I'm hugging you. Adam, I'm hugging you, the, you right no, now. No, I need hugs because these are the things I think about. This is yes. why, you know. You know how it is. You know how it is. We're locked inside their own, our own cage of our minds and souls and hearts. and. Anyways, so Maggie, um, <laughs> I'm sorry to have a breakdown during your interview. The, um, but anyways, let's see, foosball, foosball. Um, <laughs> have you ever played in a Swiss format? Not. <laughs> <laughs> let's try really hard. I don't know. I have. I, hey, Tom, I, can you I take thought... control of this? Can you take control of this? <laughs> That's a valid Thank question. You, Thank you. Right. Go ahead. I'm sorry. That's a good question. Maggie, I, this I is a like have you played Yeah. Have you, have you played Swiss before, Maggie? No, I haven't. Um, the the only thing I think is if I can even compare it to is like a, a monster draw. And at yes. the beach beat down, they did have, you know, the monster draw or the draw. And just like Liz was saying, I I was right up there. It was me, Tony, and Tommy. Um, and we would, we would all three bounce, you know, first, second, third, first, second, third. And I wound up, I have pictures. I wound up being number one and then Tommy and, and Tony were two and three, which again, doesn't mean anything. Right. Um, but it, it did in a sense mean something to me that I was, I was, you know, producing results that those guys were producing. So that was pretty cool. Um, and then you, you know, get paired up for the finals or whatever, but third place wasn't, wasn't too bad, but, um, it was neat. I liked it. And like Liz said, is a lot of foosball and not to me makes it worth it than, than going and sitting around and, you know, and just burning. Yeah. Nobody has time. Let me, I mean, let me, make time. here's my opportunity now to illuminate some of the guests on the call with some information they'd probably love to have. It is going to be monster format, Swiss, the draws are, and we have this romantic goal that I don't think we can make because we're trying to figure out how many rounds we can in the time allotted. If we can get it done and we can't because there's 64 of you, we would love for a situation where you play against and with every single person there. I don't know if we're going to be able to pull it off, but you see mm. what we're going for. We're going for you playing on the on the team. And mind you, this is a single winner format. So your partner, Daphne, is your partner and the bring your partner, but she's absolutely, absolutely your competitor and enemy in every single other event because you're competing with Daphne for that big prize. So it, it serves you to play with Daphne really well when she's on your team and to crush her blindly when she's <laughs> posing you. But the way this format also works is that if we can get you to, let's imagine we can get you to play with one third of the field and play against one third of the field in a, one in a, in a two and a half day span. The way it's supposed to operate is 
you're supposed to be able to, you're supposed to be taking notes on your partner when they're on your team. So you could take their head off when you compete against them. That's the whole idea. So there's as many people as we can get in front of you. So if it's our, if we can pull it off, we'll have, I don't know, as many rounds as we can in the qualifying rounds. And then it absolutely does matter because then there's playoffs. So you get the qualifying rounds, X amount of rounds, whatever they are. You get to a playoff where there's a final eight teams. And that matters because wherever you place in every single one of these events has a point allotment that's cumulative event after event. And the total points winner at the end of the whole thing wins the big prize. And no one will know who's going to win until it comes down to the very end. It comes down to the very end. And even the people on the finals of singles may not be the winners of the event. They're probably how they end up might decide who the person who took fifth in singles finishes. So it's, 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 I know that's a lot, but let me just say that it's going to be what you did at Beach Town, it's going to be 10x because you're going to be playing intense foosball with against and with hopefully everybody in the room. Amazing. Wow. Mark. Very cool. It's lovely how Mark, Mark can, can testify for our guests. I love that. Fantastic. Yeah. He can paint Testify. a picture. <laughs> yeah, I, I I don't have anything else because I'm still recovering uh, from my my uh, other question. So, uh, <laughs> but but you know what? When we, we come you're back, not to the this, only you know, one still recovering. I know you're. All, I'm so, sorry. Uh, I know. I've sent. Yeah, I'm sending. I'm sending neosporin and band aids. But um, well, I do because because once because here's the thing, and I'm just here's a preview. Once everybody's been introduced and we've talked, I have some questions. As the only person here that has won an event like this, I have some questions and I have some thoughts. And I yeah, want to hear what good. people's th thoughts are about that. But go ahead, Tom. I want to hear that uh, what that that your sound drop. Oh, I love so that. so yes, we do have another gladiator waiting in the wings. And uh, Maggie, thank you so much for uh, for joining us. And hopefully you'll you, you can stick around for a little while longer. But uh, our next up, all the way from Chicago, Illinois. Please welcome to Foos Talk Live in the Thunderdome Special Edition, Rich Cotter. Hello, Rich. Hey, hey, it's DJ Rich Kid Rich, Dreadlock Bitch from Chicago. How are you guys doing? <laughs> love, love the nickname. Awesome. That's great. That's, uh, now, that is what we call uh, a personality. Step up to the table. Rich, uh, first of all, thanks for joining us, but uh, wondering uh, how long you've been in this business of playing foosball? Uh, I started playing foosball in Loyola. I played soccer in Loyola, and my goalie in our sophomore year brought in our foosball table, which was a dynamo table in 1997. Wow. Yeah. And I pretty much, and then in 2001, I found my first tournament at Mullins in Wrigleyville. And then I got hooked and I didn't miss a tournament for about like about 10 years straight. And then, uh, probably then I, I pretty much played about until 2013. I took a break cause I actually had carpal tunnel. Oh, so. And um, I took a three-year break, uh, got healthy, stopped drinking, got in shape. My pain went away, and, and then I've been back playing for five years straight. Now, are you a big part of the uh, the Chicagoland uh, Foosball Club? Yeah. Shout out to John McDermott for hosting Monster Draws in his house in Mount Prospect every week. we got a great group of players, and, nice. uh, man, it's it's wars down there every week. So love it, love it. Looking forward to going Rich. to Florida? Sorry, go ahead. No, Tom, please no. finish your question. No, just yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to Florida. I can't wait. I, I, I'm I, so happy Mark invited me, and I, I think we were the last team in, and uh, I was, like, calling everybody on my phone. I'm like, I got to go, I got to go, I got to go. I didn't understand the format, and then when I – when Mark explained the format, I'm like, this is a no-brainer. I mean, if you're, a, yeah. if you're a strong player, you should be in Florida for the Thunderdome, and – uh so I just jumped at the opportunity when it when it was explained to me. I didn't quite understand it until it was explained to me. I just saw I'm like, wow, that's a cool promo. And I had no I don't know what a fist war Swiss format is, but now I do from uh we'll listen in so far. So yeah, I can't wait, guys. Yeah, I was gonna say you're the thirtieth team. And there's actually 30th. There's like a, you're the thirtieth team. They're only taking thirty two teams and there's um uh, there's a team from there's like three teams that are they just haven't paid yet so i think this that's it's a pre-registration there's a team from alabama a team from southern california and there's a split team um someone from new york who's trying to sponsor a high level player but i'm not gonna i don't want to expose anything until it until it happens i think the bracket is pretty much closed and we'll disclose the full um draft so i didn't i wanted to make sure that was clear that you're the 30th team um okay. but uh Rich, you know what I love is you're on, you're on uh, social media and you do some kettlebell stuff. 
you use some weight training stuff and you get pumped up. Is that getting fired up and pumped up for foosball tournaments? Can you talk about that for a little oh, bit? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it gives me a reason to train. I mean, I'll train for general health anyway because uh, training with kettlebells keeps me sober because it keeps me my endorphins high. And then during recovery time, you would – you do not want to be a kettlebell swinger and have a, and and have a hangover within any at all. It just it's like it's been the best lifestyle change for me. And actually, it's probably why I'm able to play foosball is because I do like to practice kettlebells and I do practice yoga. And uh, you know, I I lost some weight and I got a lot stronger core because I stopped drinking. I you get good at foosball. You get a good two bar if you're from Chicago by drinking. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, you know, so, you don't that. get as much money in your bank account in Chicago until you stop drinking. So those are all good sage advice for our 17 year old on the, on the call today. Thank you, Rich. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Rich. Um, I have a question for you. Um, yeah. And I hope this isn't too personal. I don't think this is personal. It can't be personal. You, 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 um, you do kettlebells on your Facebook page. So obviously there's nothing too personal for you. So mm -hmm. my question is, what's the most you ever won in a single event? Oh my God. Uh, uh, not, not, and you can, man. you can, wait, you can, wait, 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 you can adjust, it, you can adjust for inflation if you want to. Oh uh, yeah. If I adjusted for inflation. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, I would need I would need to, man. You know, <laughs> I, I would say like maybe I I literally don't remember winning more than like sixty bucks splitting okay, yeah. splitting splitting mm -hmm. like one twenty, maybe a little bit more than I, th I that's the last I can remember. All right, so uh, I I I'd be splitting just... a a hundred and twenty dollar pot for whatever whether it was first place right. or second yeah. place, you know. So you know so and so let me tell you this so there was a, a a point there was a ball in singles in the in the, the king of the hill the the version before yeah. this you're playing it there was a point that i had that if i had scored in one it was a difference of i think three thousand yeah, dollars yeah i don't know what eight hundred dollars yeah um yeah. that's a All lot right. of that's a lot of um that's a lot <laughs> that wasn't that was in 2002 <laughs> or three money i think i could buy a tesla with that now yeah. so i don't know i mean I don't, there's no question. I it just, what are your, how do you, you know, hi. So, I mean, I never played for this kind of money before, but um, I do always, I do always try and talk people into playing money matches whenever we're, we're playing because it, it, one, it makes it a lot more fun. Two, that's actually anybody who wants to play me for money and singles or doubles at the TKO. After midnight, it's money match time. Ooh. So whoever wants some, Love come it. up to the table. We'll play some money matches. And uh, I prefer doubles with money matches. We, we have a good time, so I don't care if it's whatever amount of money it is. I mean, I'm not going to probably play for 100 bucks uh, a game or anything stupid like that because I'm on a budget. But, you know, I play a lot of money matches, and, and that's the best practice for me because that makes all the – playtime games like real tournament games for me in terms of how i play my my game you know i'm, I'm playing my a game if i play money matches that's even good. if it's for that's a dollar good. yeah even yeah. if it's for a dollar or two dollars or five dollars you're getting my a game because yeah. i don't like to lose yes. and i i like to win money when i play but i really hate losing and so Playing for even a dollar or two dollars or five dollars just puts me in my game plan mode where I'm playing, I'm playing my best. Even if we're done with the tournament for the night and we just, you know, we're just playing around for two extra an hour or two extra hours to have fun with our friends and play meaningful matches. So that's Literally, been I want to comment on that, Rich. I want to comment that that's yeah. critical. That's what we did growing up. We played for do for a dollar when we were kids, mm -hmm. and then like three dollars was a lot of money, and it changes. It puts stress on the moment. It makes you work. You play your A game when you're playing for money like that. And everyone who's yeah. coming into this tournament has a thing. And what, if that's your thing, is that if that's how you sh like iron sharpening iron is the is kind of the say the saying. If that is what it is that keeps you mentally sharp and astute, you got to be able to fall back on that thing. I people people don't know that I'm not exaggerating. You're gonna play a ball. You're gonna have a four four possession that's probably worth a thousand dollars. You'll have one, and you will absolutely have a possession that's worth three to four thousand dollars to five thousand dollars to you to a competitor. 
that you're going to be playing. <laughs> Someone's going to be watching you praying you win, and there'll be someone else watching you praying you lose. And the person that wants you to win is going to be like praying. And the person who wants you to lose is going to want to stab you because if you lose, <laughs> it means so much to them. This is all going to happen. It's going to play out real time, and you playing those money matches is a big deal. Is a big deal. Uh, Mark, Mark, how many countries are going to be watching that as it unfolds in real time? 20, well, 23, 20, 23 countries can watch. We'll see how good our marketing efforts are. Um, but uh, 23 countries can watch. We usually have like a dozen countries watching. Yeah. yeah. So, so Rich, yeah. out, of the, yeah. out of the players that are going to be there, uh, who do you most want to meet up with uh, when it comes to playing head-to-head? -head, or who do you least want to play against? Well, I'll be honest. I haven't seen the player list. And um, so I I do know that um, I owe Liz one. She beat me um, with Midori and, and uh, at the Worlds uh, when I was playing with Rob Pianowski. Um, and they, man, they're, they're tough. The ladies are probably better blocking goalies than, than all the men I've I tell you not, it, it's the truth. Mm -hmm. I so you know she's she's gonna be probably the toughest player that that I know. Um, I get to see the player list. Um, but yeah, she whooped me, so I owe her one. <laughs> I know she heard you say <laughs> that. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Well, mm -hmm. Rich, it's so nice to have you here on the on the show, man. And I uh, want to wish you the best of luck on the table when you get there to uh, to the Thunderdome. Uh, and if you can stick around for us, we'll uh, we'll uh, come back to you in just a bit. But uh, we got to bring on our next guest. Okay, I'll stick around. Thanks, guys. And so, our next guest, our next gladiator for the Thunderdome in Florida, February eighteenth, all the way from Florida. The voice you know very well, Keith Glenn. Hello, Keith. Hey, Tom. Thanks for having me. What's happening, man? Not too much. I know we've been hearing a lot about you lately and hearing from you when it comes to Inside Foods and your commentary with the, with the gang. Uh, you've been having some fun with that? I have. I enjoy every minute of it. Man, you're, you're doing really, really well. Really enjoy listening to you do the commentary. So what about Thunderdome? What, uh, what's attracting you to this big event? A uh, series of aggressive text messages from Mark, mostly. Um, <laughs> No, I mean, uh, you know, Maggie kept on the beatdown, and uh, the South Florida Foosball Club is just a couple hours down 95 from us. It's, nice. in my mind, my favorite place to play outside of my own local scene. Uh, I got a great group down there of guys and gals, foosballers, and, you know, anybody that heard or went to the beatdown knows how well that tournament ran. Mm -hmm. So, really don't have an excuse to miss this one. So, happy to be uh, able to be a part of it. Nice. Mark? Keith, Keith, I got to tell you, man, I did not expect you to play. And I, there was no um, disrespect if you we weren't going to play. I mean, it's not this event's not for everybody. It's not cheap. It's three hundred fifty bucks per person, and you got to put yourself out there to do it. And and I think we, I, well, I think the last time we spoke about this, we pretty I pretty much resigned that it wasn't for you. So when I saw your name out there with Jimmy, that you guys were going all in. I hope that it was absolutely some kind of rational. Maybe it was, you know, maybe I'm not giving enough credit to the uh, this highest placing beginner, amateur, and rookie opportunity. It's 200 bucks and and three packages. Was that a little bit appealing to you? I thought it was seven packages, but yeah, no, sorry, that sorry, yeah, yeah, seven um, packages. Yeah, which what beginner can go on tour eight times in a year? Anyway, uh, no, that's awesome, and uh, yeah, that definitely helped. Uh, basically you know we were kind of already committed we weren't we kind of had a ballpark idea what the cost was going to be yeah it was a little surprise but you're breaking up. you know oh am i yeah no you're right you're back you're good all right um you know it was a little you know didn't maybe expect it to be as high as it was but you know at the end of the day it's it's like i said fun foosball uh great scene love getting down there any chance we get uh you know at least you know if we can get into the money even just in open doubles um, you know, that kind of alleviates some of the costs. It's going to be fun. We can treat it like a vacation, you know, go to the beach in the morning, take our time. We rented an Airbnb with a pool a couple blocks away. Um, so it, it, we're going to have fun no matter what. So that they kind of just made it easier because I didn't want to go and play with this pressure of, oh, I have to win or it's going to be a total bust of a weekend. Um, you know, I don't, I, I haven't been playing for that long and I don't want to put that kind of pressure on myself at this point. Yeah. 
Uh, so yeah, no, it kind of, uh, it all sort of worked out and, you know, obviously you and I had talked a bunch about that going into it. And I think what you landed on and what you were able to put together with the, uh, beginner rookie and amateur prizes, uh, definitely makes it a little easier for some of the lower rank players to get involved. So. I got, I got one more for you before we move uh, briskly to Adam, cause I want to make sure we get all the other guests on here. Yeah, absolutely. I was, I was watching Evan McGregor on the um, bearded wonder stream he's an amateur out of texas a 17 year old amateur he's up to an amateur now he's an amateur he doubled in he, beginners in beginner uh doubles less than a year ago he's an amateur and he's right now i think he's in the i think he's in the finals of like three events i think he's he's in the finals of i, I think he, i can't tell i think he's a third or better open doubles one amateur singles like like way he's like three or four events is, is he your biggest competition as an amateur who do you think is your biggest competition as an amateur? Well, I'm a rookie. Oh, that's uh, sweet. I didn't know yeah. that. Uh, and actually, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I think, you know, he's listening, waiting in the wings, but uh, I got to see yeah. Ethan play out in Colorado and watch him take down uh, some very big dogs up there. And uh, I think Ethan, I didn't know, I thought Evan would be too. Uh, I thought, I didn't know Evan made his way up to amateur already. The kid's flying up the rankings. But um, yeah, uh, Ethan probably, uh, we got a guy out of our neck of the woods uh, named Paul Ledger who by process of the points from when he used to play to now um, is still technically a rookie, but he was a, you know, he's a very good high, probably, uh, you know, could have been an expert back in the day. He's a little rusty, um, but he's, he's going to be competitive for that. And then obviously my partner, um, I think we're the only rookie rookie team um, in the entire event, but uh, my partner, Jimmy love um, very, very good, strong singles player. So, uh, and then um, they got a, they got a guy down there, Matt uh, Matt Kleinsmith, Kleinsmith, um, who's a very good player down there. I think he won rookie doubles at TKO last year. Um, one of the local guys. Um, so those are probably the guys that we're looking at most. But I, if I had to pick, uh, just from what I've seen recently, I'd probably say Ethan's the guy to beat. Well, let me, before we move on, we're going to move on quickly. Um, I want to <laughs> tell you, man. Yeah, we don't. Uh, Adam, do you have a question? Do you want to? Yeah, uh, yeah, but you know, but, but go ahead, go ahead. Go can ahead. you save it for Ethan? Can you save what? your question for Ethan? Can you save your question for Ethan? Because I, 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 I feel like I need to. I feel no, like I want to save I'll text. Ethan. No, I'll text Keith I, later. I'll text. Keith. No, it's fine. No. Yeah. Well, yeah why don't you text yeah. him? If he, he oh, yeah. was the no, guy. No, no. Who was the guy? Who was the guy you were bumping into? By the way, he was the person you kept bumping I know. into. I know. That's um, why I wanted to text him. I just want to put this out there because a lot of people are going to download this podcast. There are a lot of amateurs and beginners and rookies that are playing this event at pretty much high risk and high exposure. You guys have been playing for like two years or less. You guys are putting a lot of down a lot of money to play. And I just want to say this, that uh, whatever compelled you guys to play, I couldn't be more proud of you guys taking this type of risk with this type of exposure, a lot of money, because it's a pioneering event for foosball. It's incredibly disruptive. It changes foosball. And uh, there's a couple scenarios. One is it blows up and it fails and it doesn't go anywhere. And you got to play the one. The other scenario is it changes foosball radically and promoters start running these types of events, Swiss or otherwise. And you guys took the risk for the forefront of pushing the envelope and changing foosball in the U.S. That's not an exaggeration or an embellishment. That's very real. And you're a part of it. So thank you for um, being a part of it. And I hope, it, uh, you know, if you, if you don't do well and a lot of rookies and beginners are going to play this, they're not going to win any money. But on the, on the flip side of it, you are integral in what's going to be could be a huge difference for American foosball going forward. So thank you for that. Yeah. Like I said, happy to be part of it. Yeah. Wow, Mark. All right. Get out of here. Who's next? Adam, go ahead. <laughs> what? Adam, oh, go no, ahead. I, I, Keith, Keith, just real quick, because I want to get, as as Mark said four times briskly to me, um, <laughs> I I just want to say, so here's, 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 here's what happened, right? So I want to recorrect history. Mark said that he called me. He never called me or talked to me about the King of the Hill, the progenitor to this event. What happened was is that Charles Smith, Chuck Smith, who some of you probably know, oh, yeah. was famously described as a McDonald's, his style of play, because it's he does the same thing in every <laughs> single place he goes when he plays foosball. But anyways, he, he calls me at 11 o'clock in the morning on a Tuesday. So, of course, I was asleep in bed. And he says to me, um, hey, my partner bailed. Do you want to play in this event next week or two weeks from now? And I was like, what's about it? He didn't. He didn't really explain it very well, but um, I thought, okay, well, it's NorCal, whatever. Mark has something to do with it. But fine. <laughs> that was it. That was it. I didn't know what happened until I was there and started playing it, and I still didn't even know what happened until after I won. Now, flash forward to this present moment where we're here doing this Discord chat 
uh, across the United States talking and, and, and like, see, so personally me, if it was me, I'm listening to all of you talk and I'm thinking about how I could break you down on the table. We're all having a mm -hmm. nice time here. We're all having mm -hmm. fun and that's fine. I mean, that's uh, you all, everybody that I've talked to so far, a lot of you I've never met. I think you're just great. I love this. This is what the, my favorite part about foosball is the humans and everything. But, but on the table, you're all dead meat to me. And I'm wondering, Keith, um, you're one of the nicest people I've ever met. You're more, I think maybe you're as offensive as like uh, room temperature mayo. And I'm wondering like, what are you getting from this? <laughs> you're a room temperature uh, mayo. Uh, you don't know this, but Keith played with me at college. Colorado State, so I showed him how to be an ass. Yes, yeah, that's, that's true. I got a, it. up close. It was funny. I, 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 I'm not dying for airtime here. I, I will do this quickly. Uh, but that was funny because what Clay and I talked about in our shooting the shot or whatever got way worse by the end of the weekend. It was, like it escalated. They were shouting. And anyway, I um, but I no, I, I definitely that helped. I, I felt a little because I was very uncomfortable at first with some of the stuff that happened, but uh, that definitely helped uh, with the nerves a little bit. And then the other, I mean, I am a competitive person. Um, I, I don't like to be because it will often bring out a side of me that I try not to portray a lot, but, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, you know, that's basically what I'm going for that weekend. Um, yeah. I, you know, we have our Academy and stuff. I don't try to pick on our beginners, but if there's beginners at right. the Thunderdome, they're, you know, they're lambs for the slaughter. Yeah. If, if, you know, uh, I'm that's sorry. kind of going to be the mindset. So. I'm glad that I bought that plane ticket the second I heard this was going on. That's all I, I wanted to know, Keith. Yeah, I'm going awesome. to downgrade you, you from room temperature mayo to maybe spoiled mayo. Room all right. Temperature. Tom? Wow. Okay. Take, take well, you know, how do we top that? How about this? How about another gladiator? This time, our gladiator comes to us all the way from Oregon. Uh, nice. Bob, Bar Bob Barnett. Bob, welcome to Foos Talk Live in the Thunderdome Special Edition. How you doing, Bob? Doing good. Thanks, Tom. Glad Thanks to, for having me. Glad to have you on tonight. I understand you're a fan of the show. Uh, it's it's so cool to have you along. Uh, when was the last time you got out to a tournament like this one? Oh, well, Colorado State would be the last tournament I played, but uh, I don't think I've ever been to a tournament like this one. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, so what what is your anticipation here? What, uh, what are you doing to prepare? Um... Well, right now I've just been, uh, you know, kind of taking it all in, battling COVID, trying to get healthy. Mm. Mm. Sorry to hear that. Sorry. I'll start practicing here in another week or so. Okay. And Bob, uh, how you doing, man? Are, yeah. you, are you um on the upswing or the downswing? When did when did you when did you first show symptoms? Um, a little over a week ago, and uh, I think I'm definitely on the upswing. I'm I've been uh, like fever free for a few days, and uh, I'm feeling pretty good. Cool. Yeah, it's it's right. uh, it's 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 really difficult uh, for sure. How long have you been playing foosball, by the way? Uh, on and off a long time. I mean, uh, real foosball since '84. You know, messing around in high school a few years before that. '90s really uh, was a big eye opener. Right. I think it was my first tour event. We've had a lot of people uh, from the 90s on so far tonight. Liz and, of course, uh, Maggie have uh, all, all kind of cut their teeth on this game in the 90s. And uh, how about you, Bob? When was the first time you went to a, a major tour? My first major tour event was 92 wow. in uh, Long Beach. Was that, that was the – um, go ahead. Great one. <laughs> yeah, was it, that was the uh, – was that the uh, U.S. Open? Is that what they played? Um, in Long Beach that year in '92, what I event think was so. it? Tour kickoff. Or, yes. Or yeah, I don't know what they called it back then. Yes, I, I was there at that event. At the 155 tables and my jaw just draw, dropped. I didn't. Uh, I wasn't expecting that. I was there. I was there with you, Bob. We'd be we'd be passing ships in the wind. So um, I, let's I talk. You were. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I think there's I think different people represent unique threats. And so someone like Liz Hill and Kathy Atkinson, who are, are, are veterans at a high level world championship play, who've been under the gun in pits um, with masters shooting on them, they represent a certain type of competitive edge. You got some young people who are high, they're twitch, I mean, high, high twitch, fast, um, just, uh, you know, like shooting without looking and have all that energy bundled up they're a unique threat. The other type of threat is the threat you are. You're a grizzled, 
veteran who's you know tested over time and been all in all kinds of unique situations what do you why don't you talk a little bit about what you think your advantages are coming into a no pro event high stakes with the other demographics of players i described what do you think your advantages are oh advantages i don't know i've uh you know i've played a lot of uh great players over the years um you know i know i've played liz a couple of times i believe over the last few years and uh had the option or the pleasure of playing Kathy when she was in Portland last year at Moneyball and uh mm -hmm. got a lot of pickup games in. Uh you know, I think uh really uh especially coming from Portland, I think everything is gonna be about the five bar and control on everything for me. Is that what you consider one of your strengths, the five bar? Yeah, absolutely. If you know, if if I don't win, it's because I didn't control the game on the five bar, but if I I, I can usually do that. I don't care who I'm playing. This is going to be very exciting. I got one more thing for you. I don't know. How, are you an expert, Bob? How many, you, you have expert uh, points? Well, I'm rated expert doubles and technically only amateur and singles. You'll be an expert so in this event. Thunderdome, you'll, but... you'll be an expert in this event. So I guess the question becomes, how's your goalie game? Because the probability becomes higher and higher. You're playing goalie in the designated. Yes. Uh, I, uh, I like my goalie game. I've been working on it quite a bit the last year or two. Um, nice. I do uh, play some goalie for Robert Hayes in the uh, pro doubles, and uh, we've had some strong finishes. So I, I feel pretty good about my goalie game. Adam? Um, I feel good about his goalie game too, Mark. Thank you. Oh, okay. Thanks, Next, so, all right. <laughs> Bob, Bob, you're, you're in my favorite um, uh, player base in the Pacific Northwest, of course. Um, which I didn't realize it was pronounced Oregon, Tom, but I'm learning all kinds of new things from Oregon. you about how to pronounce things. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> but um, my my question to you is, have you ever been to, 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 to Florida or Miami, for that matter? No, this will be a first time. And, uh, you know, probably one of the reasons I'm definitely throwing my hat right. in the ring for this one. Sure. Because I want you to know something. And this is something that I've noticed only recently as last Sunday, because I know where you, you live. Well you, well, you live in Portland or is it? Uh, a little south of there, but yeah, in that area. Okay. So I'm familiar with that because my folks live up there and I visit there as much as I possibly can. And then I was looking at Pompano Beach, which is where this is in the event. It's like about you could I think I could. Well, the way I throw, I don't think I could hit it, but I think you can throw a, a, a baseball and hit the water from the front steps of the 26 degrees brewery. And I'm Sounds just like wondering, like, 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 is it like, so do you, do you realize on Saturday, the events start at 3 p.m.? Like, yeah, what, what are we doing? Are we going to go have a, a, a drink? I mean, what, what's happening there? That just sounds ridiculous oh, for a foosball yeah. tournament. That sounds good to me. Yeah, because I know I, you like the rum and Cokes. Yes, I do. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm just writing that down. Bob Barnett, rum and Coke. Thank you. You're taking drink orders already? Are you Adam? Huh? You're taking drink no, orders? No, I'm just no, no, okay. I'm just uh, just getting it, just imagining in my head how the weekend's gonna go. That's it. Hey, Rich, Thanks, Rich, Bob. Rich, bring your kettlebells. Yeah. Rich, bring your kettlebells, bro, because this is gonna be. We need to stay sober. Yeah, right? yeah. It sounds gonna get no crazy. No kidding. Oh man. Uh, well, we we can't wait. That is for sure. And Bob, we 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 certainly hope you feel a whole lot better very very soon. And good luck in Florida. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate oh, you, it. Oh, you're very around, welcome. Man. Thanks for joining us. And of course, uh, uh, we, we must bring on another gladiator. It is Thunderdome 2022 in Florida. And our next gladiator walking, uh, coming onto the show for this evening, his name is uh, Ethan Nuon of California. Ethan, you are a force to be reckoned with from what I understand. Ethan, welcome to Foos Talk Live. Hello, everyone. How you doing, hey, man? man. So Ethan, pop in. Yeah. So uh, what's what's the weather like in California tonight? It's it's been a mix of rainy days and super, super hot days here in Southern California. Gotcha. Gotcha. I don't, it's not below zero. Nothing like that. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> oh, man. You had to say that, didn't you? So, Ethan, when was the last time you went to a tournament like this one? I would have to be Colorado, Colorado State. Gotcha. So uh, definitely. Uh, now, how would you do in Colorado, by the way? Uh, I had some good results uh, and two bad results, but mainly I just 
placed pretty well in the events that I really, really wanted to place in. Gotcha. And what did you learn in Colorado you'll be taking with you when you go to Florida to the Thunderdome? Everyone is pretty much beatable. Uh, nice. So am I. Like, I can beat up on myself pretty easily throughout <laughs> these matches. So I just need to uh, play calm. The game that um, Southern California has, it's taught me to really stay calm throughout an entire match. I'm here for the long run. Uh, but I'm also here to not implode, not self-implode. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Mark? Yeah, Ethan, you have a lot of press around you. And it's because I talk to Trevor Park all the time. And I got to be very transparent with you. I had an interest in this tournament in drawing the premier talent from around the country. I wanted to get the best players, young players from around the country. And I think I succeeded with you and Evan McGregor both coming to this event. But you have a lot of press around you because of a win against Todd Lafredo and Darren Bone in open doubles where you beat them. Uh, and as a rookie, that's incredibly impressive considering Todd Lafredo won an open doubles major with Darren uh, the tour kickoff in 2020. Tell us a little bit about that match. And if, if that was a big, I, I, want, I want to know if you understood uh, how big that was and what it was like for you to, to win that match. Well, I would like to give credit to different things first. First thing would be, it was at 2 a.m. Todd just woke up. He was really groggy. And I was super energetic at the time. <laughs> uh, the second thing would be my goalie. So, as well as I was playing on the five bar and shooting really well, uh, my goalie, Phil Peros, he was really blocking Todd, like, I think three or four times in a row before Todd finally scored one. Wow. Um, there's that. And, the, and so Trevor Park... Trevor Park doesn't hand out praise. He just doesn't do it. And he's been praising your poise. He said you took second at a draw your partner with Vivian Park at his last event. You beat quite a few masters on the way, including some story about Evan Stachelik and Mike Kyrus trying to talk you out of your game and you just pretty much running through them like a hot knife through butter. You want to talk about that match a little bit? Well, let me see. Um... I knew a little bit of things coming in. I mean, <laughs> Mike Kyrus was pretty drunk, so it was pretty easy to uh, <laughs> gain confidence off of that. As well as, uh, I already knew how Evan was blocking. Like, I, I knew what his defense was like, so I just had to wait for the right variations of timing when his men will switch. Just stay at a certain spot, and I could just hit the long or hit the three quarters. Uh, hey, man, I love that you're being self deprecating. I really appreciate that. You're not like, out there talking about you, you're making it about a lot of other things. That I got one more question for you. What are your strengths in foosball? What do you what do you, what do you think your strengths are that are going to help you be a be a winner at this event? Personally, I don't think that I'm very talented, but I think that what I do, what I uh, have, is I don't self implode at all because because back then I used to self implode a lot, and I would play against my father all the time. And he would be like, they'll get frustrated. And he would score like a five by shot on me. And I would just get so pissed off. But over time, I've uh, learned to really control myself, uh, control the whole match, as well as uh, having a suitable game that fits my style of play. Great. Hmm. Thanks, Ethan. I like that. Also, I'm curious. What is your favorite movie? Movie? Yeah. <laughs> what? Mm. What's his favorite movie? <laughs> well, My, I, mean, I want to follow up with your favorite Pokemon, but go ahead. Let's start with the movie. No, seriously. <laughs> what's your favorite movie? I'm just curious. We, we can come that. back. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. This, no, I love it. No, no, this, pet, this silence. I love it. Let it. You can hear it. No. It's hurting. Him. I know. I want to hear it. No. <laughs> don't self. Don't self implode, Ethan. It's a simple question. <laughs> What's your favorite movie? Let's go back on that. Let's go back on it. <laughs> <laughs> See, now if I was any of the other competitors over here after hearing all the big talk up about Ethan, I would keep that in mind. Oh. Ask him what his favorite movie is when you play him. Oh. That's cold-blooded, actually. You are. You're, I know. You're That's why I, I, bet he has, I bet he has an answer for it by the time he gets No, he does have an answer, and he's going to be a good, good answer. No, it is, and it's no, going to no, be a great is, movie. Is. I'm going to want to watch it. No, no, this is actually good. This is actually good. Like, if um, it's interesting. That he's, he's right. Don't let anyone now. You know, if anyone asks you what's your favorite movie, Ethan, they're trying to get in, they're trying to get in your head at this event. <laughs> what if it's me though? Because I'm not even playing. I'm just going to ask him. Oh. All right. No, 
so Ethan, how about this? Okay, all right. You don't have to answer that. But what's your least favorite poem? Oh my god. What? I don't really read poems that much. There it is. Okay, next. Sounds like a snake shooter to me. <laughs> Sounds like a snake shooter to me. <laughs> <laughs> These guys. Are, I don't even uh, know what that means. I don't know. That's either. amazing. I was going to say it no matter what. I could have just as easily said yeah. "sounds like Oklahoma" to right. me. Like yeah. it doesn't. I could say okay. right. <laughs> "sounds like Oklahoma" to me. Don't get Clay and Oklahoma started, okay? <laughs> yeah. And I know Liz is listening, so so don't yeah. go there. No, and I want you to know something. And I want you to know something, Ethan. This show, we're still, we have one more person to introduce. We're going to talk a little bit more. I'm coming back to you. I want to know what your favorite movie is. So we're doing that, but not right now. Let's no, and we, and we, you know what? I do want to say one thing before we move on, Ethan, because it is a talent to remain poised. And that's what Trevor says, is that you're composed. So you could say, I'm not that talented, but I've seen you play. You're a steady. You remind me of Trevor. You remind me of Terry Moore. And your your um, work effort, your output is just so steady. You remind me of Lewis Cartwright. You remind me of these guys that grind you down and just are consistent as heck. And so I will tell you that it is a, a great it's a great weakness in most players that they they implode and they fall apart and they start decision making gets really wacky depending on the stress and the things that people will do. And the fact that you're saying that that's something you worked on that is an incredible talent that immediately puts you in the top ten percent mentally. And the competitors that are coming to this event because a vast majority of them will fall apart when the pressure's on. So just know that is amazing talent you have and keep working on that and you'll be a world champion at the open level. Thanks. Really appreciate that, Mark. And Ethan, we know you're a force to be reckoned with, and we're looking forward to the results at uh, Thunderdome. You just never know, man. It's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun. So looking forward to seeing yeah. you play and uh, and uh, can't wait. So, Ethan, thank you so much. Let's uh, bring on our next gladiator for Thunderdome 2022 in Pompano Beach, Florida. Uh, our next gladiator in attendance uh, is from Florida. Let's welcome to Foos Talk Live for the Thunderdome Special Edition. It's Jimmy Love. Hello, Jimmy. Two men enter, one man leaves, and I plan on leaving with the cash. Oh, nice. You, you rehearsed that, didn't you? Yeah. yeah, I had a lot of time to do it. <laughs> I was intimidated. I actually, I got back in my seat. I was scared. Oh, so I could, I could see, I could hear Liz grinding her teeth just that one man enters. Yeah, because right. Yeah, yeah I know. I was quoting the movie. I didn't want to. I like it. I like it. I like well, we know it. your favorite movie, but I was asking Ethan, not you. But whatever. Sorry, sorry, Tom or Mark. I'm in your. I'm stepping no, on your No, no, you're fine. So, so Jimmy, how how long you've been playing this game of foosball? I've been playing for a while, but I didn't know about competitive foosball until about five years ago. Really? So no kidding. Yeah. What do you uh, rank? roughly about that? And what are you ranked at now? I uh, just made rookie. Oh, nice! Congratulations! Very cool. Yeah. yeah. And that was the last barely. Time, when was the last time you went to a big tournament? <clears throat> I went to Worlds. Uh, I didn't do too well, though. Uh, I got the highest placing amateur team in open doubles, so I got a little bit of money from that. Cool. Nice. Very nice. With Ben Davis. Awesome. Well, we're looking forward to Thunderdome. Have you ever played in this kind of a system? Negative. Negative. I have not. And Mark, what do you say to that? Well, I want to know what inspired you. So Keith had a lot of hesitancy and he decided um, on his own that, hey, it's worth it. There's other things here besides just going in with all kinds of pressure. And you, you have a bit of bluster in a, in, a, in a cool way, man. I mean, you got a lot of confidence and, and you seem... Uh, like you're, you're putting, you're asserting yourself that you are coming to win this event. What, why are you playing this event? Uh, well, I mean, I, I really just want to go hang out with my friends down there, you know, Tommy, Dana, Luke, and then I'd get to play foosball on top of that. So that's one reason, but, um, I mean, pressure doesn't really bother me or stress. I deal with that every day at work. Yeah. If you, what guys do you do, don't know, yeah, go uh, ahead. uh, I'm a, I'm a nurse in the ER, and COVID has been kicking my butt recently. Not me, but in and at work it has been. It's been oh. brutal. Mm. Tons of people there. So I'm glad to get away for a, a weekend. can imagine. Oh, thank you for your service, by the way. Yeah, really. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, so I got a question. Uh, maybe a lot of the rookies that are playing this event are coming from Florida, and you got Ethan, who's coming from California. Who who do you think are the top rookies at this event that you're competing with for the highest placing rookie? Top rookie? Uh, actually, I think I have to agree with uh, Keith. 
uh, but I haven't seen uh, Ethan play, but I, I uh, Paul Ledger is pretty good. Um, don't count Daphne out. She's a underdog. She's really good at defense, so I wouldn't count her out. She doesn't like to play singles, though, so that's her downfall. Yeah, I think – well, here's a here's a here's something that just occurred to me. Daphne's goalie game scoring can be very unorthodox and dangerous to people outside of Florida. There's a lot of Floridians in here that probably – I'm guessing, just I'm speculating. They might do a decent job of zoning her out. There's a lot of Florida people – at this event, I guess I'm, I'm funneling in on my, do you, do you feel like you, the most, the biggest comfort level is going to be against the Florida players that, you know, and the biggest threats are going to be from outside that are rookies and amateurs. Or do you think there's besides Paul, do you find that the Florida players um, are going to be as dangerous or less dangerous than outside talent coming in? Uh, to me, they're less dangerous. Uh, I, I'll be able to figure people out and block them pretty good. But the problem is the people I play a lot, they know me, so they know what I do and like to do. So it's harder for me to do what I want to do. Right. So I don't, uh, the Florida people don't really scare me. Uh, the one person I think may win it all uh, is Chris Carson. I think he has the best chance. Yeah. He's, Why? He's a really solid player. Go ahead, Adam. Sorry. Why? I play him. I play him daily. He should be a uh, he should be a pro, but he's expert. He doesn't come out very often, and he always seems to win at our local DIPs, and no matter where he goes. So, I, well, I hope, that's I just my guess. Listening. Hope Chris is listening. I played him with Chris Forsythe against Chris Carson, and I figured out his three bar. It took me a game, but then I put the um, the work on. And uh, so, Chris, if you're listening, I'm going to sell. Uh, rights to how to defend you <laughs> to the highest bit, or the lowest bidder. You know what I'm gonna do for the lowest bidder. If you get the lowest amount, I'll tell you how to block Chris Carson. Always hey, I want to know why why he should be a pro. Why if he's an expert, why should he be a pro? Because he doesn't go out that often. He doesn't um, go on tour, so his points just stay about the same or barely move up. So he's pro level, right? Yeah, but I mean, comparatively, you haven't seen some of these other players coming. So, uh, I watch Inside Foos a lot, so I I oh, do see. I've never I've never heard of Inside Foos. So my <laughs> question for you, I, I'm just curious. Have you? Um, what do you think Ethan's favorite movie is? Uh, what do I think his favorite movie is? I don't even. Yeah. What you haven't been sizing uh, uh, him up? Okay. No, nah, not his favorite movie. I don't even know what he looks like. What does that mean? I don't even understand. <laughs> you can hear what people talk like. Okay, let me just backtrack here a little bit. Jimmy, I'm assuming you read all the Star Wars novels, right? I don't read the novels. I see the movies. Okay, see. And I made that assumption based on what I've seen you look like. So my question <laughs> to you then is going forward for this event, if you are going to be game planning, or is your game planning... So entirely related to the people's games or do you like do you like look at because i i, I kind of asked keith this uh also like you know you have like the internet and you have like access to everybody's like lives for the most part as long as their lives aren't like blocked and stuff right but like does do you do you look at that like because i would totally be doing that if i was trying to figure out how i was going to be playing somebody not just how they play but just you know who they are no, I mean, I, I do watch Inside Foods, but I, I plan as I go. So I improvise. I watch what you do ah. and figure out your best shot and then take it away from you the next game. Nice. I like that. And also, one last question for me. Is Jimmy Love, like, is that your real name? Is that a stage name? Like, what is, is that? I've heard it all. So if you can tell me something I haven't heard, I'd be pretty impressed. I'm not making fun of you. I just want to know. <laughs> I think, I, no, think I asked him this question, too, embarrassingly, and it's his real flipping name. <laughs> That's what people yeah. call me by first and last name. It's That's never awesome. my first name. My, my my real name is Dirk Brickshitter, and, <laughs> but I just went to Adam Gilson. <laughs> and I, you know, that's just a personal choice. But could you imagine? Can you imagine the things I heard, right? Oh, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain, yes. Jimmy. He's no Dirk with the P. He, he means no harm, mostly. Wow. No, well, I've heard it all. You can't. You can't. <laughs> I'm not. I know, I'm, I'm making fun of me now. You know, let me let me say something else, Jimmy. That I don't think people get it. Your line of work absolutely is an advantage, and I don't. So, it, I mean, it's amazing. It's good. It's a good, healthy response 
that you have an adrenaline, you have some kind of a adrenaline because my line of work is very similar. I don't think it's as stressful as what you do, but I'm, I won't even try to compare in that way, but I'm in surgery between 20 and 30 times a day. It's eye surgery and it's complex and there are complications and you get so wired in to this high stress situations. At some point, I hope that you could maintain a level of adrenaline and attention. For me, it's, I've been doing this for, I guess, 20 some years now and playing foosball. It's like, you could put Frederico in front of me with a gorilla and I won't even, I have no, like, I won't even bat eyelash. I don't care because the situation. So the fact that you, that you do that for professionally, I understand the stress and it does help you because it makes you fearless. And so, um, you know, thank you for your service that, and it, it, I understand how it helps yeah. you be a competitor. Pressure is trying to get an IV in somebody who, you know, if you don't get it, they're going to die right. or they're already dead. Sure. And you have to do it or it's, they won't live. That's, that's pressure there. Yes. Mm -hmm. I understand. No question. I understand. So foosball is, is probably so just a little bit of money in a foosball game. Isn't going to phase me. Yeah. yeah. Seriously. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So what's awesome. my, what's so my could... take if you, uh, if you win it and uh, get it all, since the money's not that big, where are we, where was my cut? That's what I want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe I'll go out and buy some drinks. I did last time I won the beatdown, nice. and I don't drink very often, so you, you may see nice. me at a different level. Nice. nice, yeah, very cool. Yeah, wow. So, so Jimmy, this is certainly uh, you're you're in the Florida area. Uh, who's the the biggest threat for you as a, as a personally uh, when it comes to Florida players? I've already said Chris since I play yeah. him daily. Right, but I mean, other than Chris, is there somebody else that you would worry about? Um. Is is Craig Simpson playing in this? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I have a little. He doesn't know it, but I have a little rivalry with Craig. <laughs> Good, healthy one. Does now. He. Does. <laughs> it's back and forth. I beat him once. He beat me a couple of times. But I actually look to him to win. If if now that I know he's in it, he may actually be a good person to win. Got it. Got it. Got it. Well, Jimmy, thank you so much for being here. I think it's time we uh, we we go to general questions. Um, now, guys, uh, I'd like to lead this off. Um, so first of all, I'd like to bring back Maggie Strong. Maggie, are you still with us? I am. Maggie, I'd like you to uh, I'd like you to talk directly to Jimmy and tell tell Jimmy why you're gonna you're gonna uh, make a mess of him on the table. Wow. Well. Um... Why I'm going to make a mess of, you know, I don't anticipate um, anybody being any more tough than the next, but um, I love Jimmy's name. So I am. Um, <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That, that speaks volumes. I'm the word love changed my life and um, it actually oh. changed my foosball game. Oh. I used to be, I used to be rough and tough and I feel like I won a lot of my earlier matches with intimidation with a lot of the, the younger female players and, now that I found, I found love, not Jimmy love, but I found love kind of softened me up a little bit, but um, I think everybody's going to be out for everybody at this tournament. Um, yes. I think it's going to be a lot of fun though. I think we're all going to, in a sense, be, you know, cheering each other on. Cause with that, with the, you know, minimal player base, you're going to pretty much know most of who you're playing. And um, I think there's a part of me anyway, that'll be rooting for everybody, but hoping that I come out on top, but um. Um, I've got to play Jimmy a couple times when I visited Florida and, and, um, and, uh, I'll just be ready for everybody. That's all I can say. Very cool. Very the, the most diplomatic way you can put it for sure. Mark. Yeah. I, uh, I hope that everyone on this call gets to play with each other and against each other. And I hope everyone understands and everyone approaches foosball differently. And there's all, everyone approaches competition differently. And there's all, there's this whole continuum, whether it's, I, I don't know if you've listened to the podcast before, but my favorite conversations in the recent months have been about Tony Spreadman because Tony, I remember when he was a 17 year old angry kid, and now he's in his mid to later thirties and his, his competitive edge is 180 degrees different and probably more lethal than it was. So the reason why I'm bringing that up is we have X amount of personalities. I'm counting one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, maybe seven or eight different seven personalities on here. Each of you competes differently for different reasons. And there's no reason why any level of competing is better than the other. I could hear it in your voices. I could hear it in your why. I could hear it in your how. I know some of you personally. So um, uh, I just uh, I just love the idea of all of you guys getting together and um, battling it out and and uh, and figuring out uh, who's who's why and how is better on that weekend. Was there a question in there? No, it's just me talking to myself. <laughs> <laughs> We're all used to that. Nothing unusual. <clears throat> Adam? Um, let's see here. <laughs> I I don't <laughs> you, you I don't can... I don't even know what to say because <laughs> like him. listen, I all right, so all right. Um let's see. Well, he's right. in here. No, no no listen, listen. I used to work at the Renaissance Fair. <laughs> oh my <Yeah>. god. <laughs> Just shut up and listen. Let me take you on a journey. I used to work at a renaissance Did fair. Did you really? Jeez. Yeah. You hand out big turkey legs? What was your job? You all go to foosball tournaments. Come on. <laughs> Give me a break. Dude, at least it was a foosball table. <clears throat> just just calm down, all right? I used calm to work down. at renaissance fairs in San Bernardino in Southern California, and it was it's awesome. Real. This is real. Oh no, God. no, this is a real thing. No, just okay. listen. I never tell stories without a point, and I'm going to open it up to everybody no, else. You because do. This is you a do, thing. but go ahead. Keep talking. I know. Just listen. So it was two two days, three days, and in, in 100-degree weather in San Bernardino. It was disgusting, and I slept on a bale of hay every night, and I was selling <laughs> pure me. goblets. You're kidding You're crapping me right now. You're totally shitting No, this is 100% true. Just Why would the, it's not real. It's not really the 15th century. Why were you sleeping on hay? Why would you sleep on a flipping bed? I was getting the full experience. Oh, and wow. truth be told, okay. yeah, but no, but there was a, there was a, just, let me just, come on. Okay, go ahead. So there was a group of friends that I made during that time period who I would have never been, not friends with, but I, who I just never would have been close to because it was an incredibly ex intense experience. And those kind of moments, even though, you know, you're just being stupid and saying yield this and yield that, and you put a feather over your Bluetooth uh, earbud <laughs> for your yield Bluetooth. Um, but it's still when you're still an us against them kind of situation and engenders a type of familial bond that you wouldn't rec think that you would have otherwise. It's something as stupid as sitting in a big pile of dirt in 100 degree weather for three or four days. And I'm just curious. Everybody that's going to be at this tournament that weekend is going to experience this because this is going to be something that is a level of intensity. And I, I'm going to ask this is my question is to Liz here. Because uh, Liz and I think I don't know who who else has question, been there. But... What's the question? Question. Liz, you played in. <laughs> I want to talk more about the rent fair. No, but Liz, <laughs> you've played uh, internationally, right? Represented the World Cup. I, mean, I have. Quick. Yes. Did you not feel that there was that kind of making of friends or that that experience with the people that you were there that maybe you weren't necessarily going to be friends with or get close to when you were there in that environment? Definitely. No there you go. It. But but to that point, though, because the intensity is also very huge, but the pressure, because that's really my big question that I wanted to ask you, the pressure that you experience on that world stage and the pressure that you experience at, at a tournament like this where there's not a lot of players, there's a lot of money, and a lot of people are watching. Could you talk to that? Like, what is that even like? What is that? You know, it, it comes and goes. Um, because I've been playing for long, for so long, over 30 years, um, it's, it, it just depends. It just really depends. But, but I'm actually really curious how I will feel when I arrive in this arena and this type of, um, tournament, because even at world cup, while the pressure is, um, you know, just different and huge, you're not playing for anything. <laughs> you're not playing, right. you're just playing for bragging rights. Um, it's a different right. kind of pressure. Uh, you know, you're, you're, you're the, the women and players that are normally the ones that I'm trying to beat here locally have, have become my teammates and it's just a different kind of feeling. And, and it's basically, you know, you're trying to put a beat down on another country. Um, so, <laughs> so with going to Florida, um, you know, I mean, anybody who knows me, when when it's go time on the table, I really don't care who you are. Um, you're just my opponent, um, and I'm going to do everything in my power to make that match go in my favor. Um, 
and that's it. And then, you know, it, it, and then when we're done, we're done. And some people walk away going, man, you know, I mean, who knows? I, I'm sure there's right. all kinds of words people use in their brains when they walk away from a match against me, whether I win or lose, maybe I'm, you know, hacked, maybe I'm not, I don't know. Uh, but it, when the match is over, the match is over. So um, the pressure, it, it's it's just going to depend. Um, so I'm curious. I, I am curious, curious about how it's going to be uh, for me personally. Um, I'd like to feel it again. Um, I think that's what makes it more exciting. I think um, playing under pressure is something that can bring out the very best in you. Um, you really can see what you are capable of. And then, you know, sometimes it brings out the worst. Then you'll know better next time when you're in that situation again, what what not to do. Yeah, no, that's I awesome. Got, got question. Sorry, go ahead, Mark. Let's bring Rich in. Rich, you there, bud? Yeah. I, I want to know how you're going to prepare for this event. Your partner, by the way, Rich is playing with Russ Dyerly. And Russ is a really good longtime seasoned expert he um, he actually has novice wins in the late '80s, and so he's been an expert for a long time. He just has stopped playing for a long time, like everybody else. Um, very unorthodox game, but how do you prepare for this event, Rich? Uh, well, I'm going to add. I'm going to be training with Cradle Bells three times a week, uh, except for the probably seven days before a tournament, and I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to practice a little bit more yoga and I'm going to I'm sitting outside the bar I don't have a table I'm as soon as we get off the phone I'm gonna get something to eat and then I'm gonna go in the bar and practice by myself at the Emporium in Chicago and put in the extra table time that I need to uh not having a table uh, I just have to practice and be disciplined uh when I practice just be very disciplined and um that's uh, something that I've always been a disciplined practice player. And then, uh, you know, I'm just going to trust my my game plan. I've been in seven world championships, notoriously playing 13 events in those tournaments, which is way too many. But I think all that experience is going to help me uh, at this tournament. So um, that's what I'm going to do. Mark, about, I've, uh, um, Mark, I've got a go question for you. And yeah. uh, I'd like to toss this out to, to other people on the panel as well. But, Mark, um, what kind of game is going to uh, be favored in this kind of format? What uh, yeah. What uh, kind of game is going to be uh, uh, dominant? And um, who on this panel is going to have that game? Yeah, well, I'll speak to that for a minute. From history, as a guide, the player that had the most balanced series of events won every time. No, like no one who won this event ever won the singles event. So that should be very encouraging. Mm. But outside of that, it's true. It's absolutely true. Um, now, Tony Spreedman actually tanked one of the events completely. He went out and two in one of the events and he took second. Wow. So there is still hope for you, even if you take a complete dive. But that was, remember, that was double elimination. That was not Swiss. That was in 03 and 04. So... This event is truly going to favor if, if um, and Adam, who's won this event, those things are still kind of true. You want your single game singles game dialed in because you probably need to win at least two rounds in the singles to win the whole thing. Mm -hmm. You need to win probably at least two rounds in the singles. That's unless you dominate the other events. But let's imagine um, you take fifth and the draw your partner. You probably want to take at least well, you probably want to get in the finals of at least one of the other two bring events. And probably finish no low, no lower than thirteenth, because this is it's it's I mean it's going to have sixty four places, so you need to have a balanced you, you need to have a great overall weekend. You don't have to win anything, and then you have your singles game dialed in to win at least two rounds in the singles. Uh, for I would say for the higher rated players, the probability is high you're going to play goalie in the designated, so you're going to get an amateur or beginner or a rookie. And then your other parts of your skills are tested. And that skill is what kind of diplomat are you? What kind of coach are you? How can you, how can you, um, uh, how can you bring poise to a team that's a high anxiety? You got, if you got a beginner who's got a match ball shot, that means a thousand dollars to you. Do you have the skill set and the presence of mind and the delivery and the presentation to relax a beginner and guide them to score a point? Start mm -hmm. thinking about how you'd want to start practicing your coaching skills. 
because those will be as critical as anything else you do. So the, the great experts that are high rated absolutely need to be great mentors and coaches in this event. And that's kind of the reason why it's designed this way too. That's why the designated is the highest scoring event next to the singles. So I think I spoke a lot, but you get where I'm coming from. The, the expert players are going to be tested as goalies, coaches, and mentors. And the other finer points of their game are going to be tested al along the entirety of the way. And so uh, who on this panel has the, the, the best game that you know of uh, to, 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 to come uh, well, out? Well, so um, what's, here's, also I'll give you a unique property. Uh, well, of course, uh, it goes without saying that Liz is a big threat mm -hmm. in this event. And mm -hmm. Maggie, by yep. the way. Liz and Maggie. I just want you to know that you're really putting a lot of pressure on me, and I don't appreciate it. <laughs> That's all. You, like, you can't handle it. But so, but yeah, hey, if there were, there, there's other experts, too, that if they were here, I'd say the same thing. I don't know what Chris Carson's goal This is the thing about Liz. She's played goalie in open mixed versus masters. Now, it's different than playing beginners and amateurs shooting on you that don't necessarily know where the ball is going. That is a unique property about playing unique, um, amateurs and beginners. At least with the master, there's a high probability they're going to go where the, the ball wants them to go. But Liz is a good goalie who's going to do probably do as well as anyone that designated. But let me get a little bit further. Here, who, 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 this also favors the low-rated player with a great forward game, and that makes Ethan a big threat. In this event, it makes Evan a big threat. In this game is an amateur with like a pro forward game. So there's a, a myriad of the, you know, there's a myriad of different types of threats in this. It still comes down to what's between your ears. And that's why the rookies, beginners, even Ethan is going to have challenges because of having poise um, in the clutch versus these more experienced players. Nicely answered, Adam. Well, as I've said, um, this, this format favors on paper the best most well-rounded singles player that has the best draw and designated and kind of the best draw on the regular draw what is monster but, adam it's monster so they're gonna have rotating draws it's monster so yeah. we're gonna have to talk about that right i mean yeah we, we really i mean i think that that, that we're, we're gonna get to that but the, the point are is the though is go, sorry are go the monsters are the monsters two out of three or one to seven we're, Great we're, question. No, they're not, they won't be one to seven for sure. That's too limiting. And okay. we're going to figure out what's the most amount of rounds we could get in. So okay. I, I don't want to commit to anything right now because I don't want to confuse anybody. If we can get the, we have time, we, we want to play and end at certain times so people aren't playing until okay. late. Well, you'll get okay. that information very soon. Okay, thanks. Uh, I also have a question for, is it monster for both the designated DYP and the normal DYP? Because that's a bit too long, isn't it? Uh, it'll be right now, right now, we want it to be monster for both of those events. We want it to be monster for both the draws. All right. Mark, what is the difference between monster and Swiss? Well, um, monster is kind of a Swiss format. It's qualifying rounds before you get to playoffs, but monster means you played in this, you know, the monsters, right? You, oh, yeah. you switch partners after every round every week. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's monster. Okay. Gotcha. Wait, but uh, is there not a difference? I, I would I, say no. I don't think there's a difference. The difference is in the name. Yeah. I, Play. Oh. Is cool. there a difference that you know of? What is the defining <clears throat> difference between a monster, monster Swiss, and Swiss that's not monster, Clay? I, 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 you can't flip my question on me. I was the one trying to learn. No, yeah, okay, know. yeah, yeah. So Swiss Swiss is a format where you have qualifying rounds and then through some metric you decide who's in the final rounds and then you play that off. We're doing that for sure. I think the differentiating piece that makes it monster is not having the same partner. So I think that we're going to ever absolutely through the qualifying rounds you'll have a different partner every round. Mm. Gotcha. Got it. Yeah. If I might chime in on that real quick, um you know, I was just thinking about, you know, players like Evan and Ethan who are the younger players who are incredibly talented we were talking about um evan earlier you know he's now an amateur he's not a rookie anymore and he's playing as we speak in a, in a tournament um and you know he's young and ethan's young and you have these younger players who are scary and you know i want to draw one of those players mm -hmm. you know yeah evan play front for me <laughs> in the dyp yeah. ethan oh, yeah. please yeah. play front for me you're the lower you know you're ranked lower than me and you're full of energy absolutely i'll be happy to block and pull points um so i think that's that's pretty cool that you know yes there might be and do you guys know what the percentage is as far as like experts and rookies and amateurs i'm, I'm curious but i mean 
you know, just because you draw a, a lower ranked player, if you're an expert level player, you know, that's not a bad thing. <laughs> I think that's count, actually yeah. great. And last count, I think it's more, I think um, I'm trying to remember from, mem from memory, but I think 34, at least 34 of the players or more were amateurs and rookies. So at least mm. half the field, if not two thirds of the field. So th there's going to be like, um, I think I think it might end up being close to half the field as experts or less than half the field as experts. But um, it, these the, the way the draws are going to be set up, they're not going to be set up as a uh, high low. You, if you you'll draw anybody, you could draw Chris Carson, you could draw Bill Chance, you could draw any of the experts and play with an expert. But it, I think a thing a strong point you made though, Liz, is what's unique about this event too. And Adam will remember this, even though it wasn't Swiss. This is going to be more difficult than when Adam played it. Because you guys are going to be playing your tails off. You got endurance matters. So people think they want to play a lot of foosball and play all the time, and they don't need breaks. Prepare for that. Endurance is going to be tested in this event in a big way. Like be ready to hydrate because you're going to be playing your tail off, and you may want to take a break, Liz, and you may want to take that uh, hot amateur and, and have them play for one for you. Love Did it. You say pot amateur? Yeah, I said yeah, I said I said cannabin cannabin amateur. Oh, now he's he's he's, he's, he's out of Montana, head. right? Real quick question, uh, Mark is: um, Are they going to release um, the the player list bef beforehand once it's all filled up, so yeah, people can gonna, game plan? We have one promo already. Um, I, another team just signed up, by the way. So I think we're at thirty-one teams now. I was just hoping to get all sixty-four players. And have that finalized before we sh um, before I released it. I have one promo set up that has all the players' names individually, and I'm going to do another one that has it by team. And so that that one with the singular players will probably be released uh, early tomorrow, and you'll see everyone individually competing because it is an individual competition. So I want to bring uh, Keith Glenn back. Uh, Keith, uh, I got to ask you the question now that you've had all this time uh, doing commentary for inside foos and watching a lot of matches. When it comes to the list of, uh, of the people that we've just been discussing, when it comes to Thunderdome, who would you like most like to draw in the DYP? In the regular DYP? Yeah. Uh, I would probably have to go with uh, the, for me personally, I'm not suggesting he's the best player there or that anybody would win with him, but I play real well with the promoter, one of the promoters, Tommy Brewer. Mm, um, we right. double dipped a, a pro last time we drew each other down there in South Florida. Um, so probably Tommy. Uh, and I, I actually have seen, I've gotten a little peek behind the curtain. I've seen the list um, of the players and there's going to be some very good teams uh, from all around the country. I don't I kind of address Liz's question. I think there's only like four beginners, oh. a handful of rookies. Right. And I think most of the players are amateurs or experts. Well, I, I can say personally, if you know, as a, as a beginning uh, player and, and mostly goalie, I don't know that I would go to a, an event like this just because I, I just don't have a, a round, rounded game. I don't like playing singles. Yeah, I, I, I'm a, a monster format because I'm, I'm primarily a forward as a lower ranked player. So if I ended up having to play goalie for somebody ranked lower than me, I was going to be in trouble. Mm -hmm. So uh, glad to hear it's going to be mixed up and. Uh, Hopefully that'll play out well, but we'll see. Um, yeah, uh, thanks, Keith. Uh, uh, Bob Barnett, are you still there, buddy? Yeah, yeah, uh, I am. I, I got a, a quick question for you. So, quick, little two parter, real quick. Um, I, I'm curious uh, who you're playing with, because you're out of Pacific, the Pacific Northwest. Who you're playing with? Is there any other players coming out of the Pacific Northwest besides maybe potentially your partner? And uh um, what's your experience there playing against that player base? Like, how, how do you think it's going to help coming over into Florida? Oh, well, I'm playing with Harold Hutchinson, which is a, a older player like myself around the Northwest here. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, we played together a lot in the locals all the time. So, and, uh, I think we can uh, be a strong team, uh, you know, front or back, whatever we have to do. Uh, you know, we got some competition that we face a lot with uh, the likes of, you know, Justin Shaw and Robert Hayes, uh, Ryan Harvey. Those guys give us a, a, mm -hmm. a work. Cody Byrie? So, uh, yeah, Cody's actually made it down a few times, and uh, yeah. sometimes we can get up there with him, too. So it's, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not really worried about everybody. 
I think uh, I feel pretty confident about it, actually. Now, after uh, Mark explained it a little more, I actually thought I had to win singles. No, <laughs> you don't. You just, no. it's, this is, listen, this is uncharted waters for me, too, you guys. I ran this event three times with 16, um, 16 teams. I've never run it with 32 teams, and mm. it's going to be wicked. It is going to be very, <laughs> very cool. So one of the things we're working right now on right now are the scenarios to ensure that you guys get the number of matches, the playing experience. I already said this earlier. I don't want to repeat myself. We're going to, we're going to figure out if we can get you guys at least 20 matches. We, we, we're striving for 20 matches. If we fall short, it'll somewhere be somewhere between guaranteed matches, by the way. Well, it'll probably be somewhere between 12 and 20 guaranteed matches. That's a time issue and a format timing issue. But if we can get you that much experience at a minimum, granted, the people that are winning the events are going to play more than that. It's a lot of foosball to be playing in a short period of time. Grant, remember, we're starting at like 1.30 on Friday, and we got to end at a certain time, like 10.30 or something, or 11 or something earlier on Friday. It ends. That's it. This, we, we leave the room, and then we come back at 3 the next day and do the same thing, and it's finite. We stop at like 8 o'clock on Sunday. So we have these fixed hours that are very generous and easy to work with. You're not there till 3 a.m. You're not sitting around waiting for a match. It's going to be sick. It's going to be very, very cool. And all the rounds are on me, and I'm going to buy you several glasses of water, um, Rich, <laughs> with the, before your kettlebell works. <laughs> yeah. Sounds awesome. Well, uh, you guys, we're, we're uh, down to our last uh, 15 minutes of uh, Foos Talk Live, but i uh, got to say, I think we have uh, some more uh, opportunities here. Uh, I've just come up with an idea. Uh, each of you are going to call you out by name, and I want you to give me your favorite movie and uh, <laughs> a statement uh, as to what you're bringing to, to Florida with you and, and why to watch out for you. So, Liz, you're going to take the first shot at this. What's your favorite movie, and uh, what are you bringing with you to Florida? Um. You didn't give me a chance to think about it. Um, so, okay, Princess Bride. Yes. Um, Yay. I like it. Bride sounds very right. What was the second question? What are you, what are you bringing with you? What it's past you... my bedtime. I mean, I'm I'm getting a little sleepy here. Oh no no well, no! You're you're like half my age. Come on. Um, so, what are you bringing with you to Florida that everybody has to worry about? Well, I mean, I it's uh. <laughs> I'm bringing my smile and my experience to Florida. Nice. nice. That's dangerous. She's bringing her charm. Yeah. Love it. Lethal. <laughs> Lethal. <laughs> well, Maggie, you've had some time to think about this. It's your turn next. Your favorite movie. And what are you bringing to Florida? Uh, my favorite movie is going to be The Notebook. Oh, and, oh wow. Um, I know. I'm shopping. I love that movie. And, and um, and I am, you know, every time I go to a tournament, I'm, I'm bringing the change up. You know, I want to, I want to bring something that nobody's expecting um, when they play me. And um, I, I like to, I like to consider myself getting in there and, and, and forcing the brackets to go a different way. And nice. that's what I'm bringing to the tournament. Very cool. Awesome. Love that. And okay, uh, Rich, it is your turn. What's your favorite movie and what are you bringing to the tournament? My favorite movie is the line is hold, hold, hold Braveheart with Mel Gibson. Whoa. <laughs> and what I'm bringing to the tournament is my snakeskin pants and my oh, snakeskin boots look out. packed in my bag. Nice. And, and that's what I'm bringing. Mark, is that considered a, a legal distraction? <clears throat> Mark, I like it. Yeah, no, no, it's it's super cool. Um, <laughs> I will ask for permission first before I touch your shoes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was weird. That's as weird as Adam. Anyway, no, it's yeah. not. Unlike no, Adam's yeah. move. No. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, 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 don't pass the buck. Anyway, sorry, Rich, that was a great answer, and I'm looking forward to seeing. I'm looking forward to watching Mark touch your boots or ask permission oh, first. Oh, oh, sweet, oh, sweet. Oh, oh. So, Keith, you are next. What is your favorite movie, and what do you bring into the tournament? I'm gonna go with National Lampoon's Van. Oh, wait, which one? And Vacation? I'm gonna go which one? Vacation? Wait, which one? No, you, you Van, Van, Van Wilder. Vacation? Oh, Van Wilder. Wilder. Give me a uh, Claire Claire Ryan Reynolds. Got, it was very. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, I know. Clutch for me. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, 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 I know. Y
Yeah, um, Christmas Vacation crushes that movie. But I, I mean, Christmas, Christmas Vacation is good too. I'm not saying those aren't good movies. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry. This doesn't have to happen right You're now. The in front worst. Of everybody. I know. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to bring the great wall of love behind me, and we're going to win open doubles. That's what we're bringing down to South Wow. Oh, That's a oh, great tie-in. Very wow. kinky. Let's see what his yeah. answer is, too. I want to see I want to see Mark uh, ask permission to touch the great wall of love. Yeah. <laughs> Just filthy. Oh, that's terrible. All right. Just okay, move. so, Let's Bob, Bob, what is, yeah. uh, Bob, what are you, what are you bringing to, uh, well, what's your first move? First of all, what's your favorite movie, and what are you bringing to the tournament? My favorite movie. Well, first of all, I can't believe nobody's come up with foosballers yet. Yes. Whoa. Yes. Yes. Here's a fan. Yes. Close it out, saying. What I'm bringing to Florida. Well, I'm bringing the uh, Colorado State 63 and over doubles champion, or one of them. Nice. Nice. My partner. And uh, I think. Uh, I'm bringing a, a five bar. Everybody better watch out for it. I believe it. Okay. Ooh, it. Everybody knows it. me, so I feel pretty good. Smooth Seen like uh, like like yes. black label, right? Smooth. Right on. Okay. And uh, Ethan, it's your turn now from California. What uh, What is your favorite movie, and what are you bringing to the tournament? So I don't really have a favorite movie, but a, a fa one of my favorite TV shows would be Criminal Minds. Criminal Minds. Really. <laughs> Okay, I did. Uh, whispering. Am I having a moment? Oh, no, 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 funny. Maggie. <laughs> <laughs> am I having a breakdown? Again? No, it's Maggie. It's Maggie. Go, but sorry. Go, oh, keep going. okay. Keep going, Ethan. What are you bringing? For for me, uh, what I'm bringing to Florida would probably be my controlled game and my mindset. <laughs> mindset. Nice. There you go. I'll, I'll just say, Ethan. I can say this because I'm a Pacific Islander. Ethan, Ethan brings that Asian mystique, like the unflappable Asian powers. Nice. Just nice. know that's happening. Definitely cool. Definitely cool. Well, Jimmy, love you get to you get to uh, polish this one off. What's your favorite movie, and what do you bring it to? I mean, you're already there in Florida, but what do you bring to the tournament? Uh, I guess my favorite movie is Saving Private Ryan and bringing my Swiss Army knife of foosball skills. Nice. Oh, the Swiss Army knife. I love that. Boom. And a Tom Hanks fan too. Definitely is cool. Swiss, is that a Swiss format joke? Ooh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow. No. Okay. I was thinking nice. the same thing, Clay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Mark, what 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 would you like to ask of our guests? Uh I've asked a lot of questions and I've talked a lot without um appreciating their presence. So I'll just uh I'll just say that I'm grateful that everyone who's rolled the dice to play this event. I said it to Keith, but I mean it for everybody. You guys are taking a risk and you're taking a risk exploring something in discovery that I'm. Sh it's our responsibility and really our burden to ensure the level of hype meets the experience. And we're very working very, very hard on that. We've, we've, we worked very hard initially on ensuring the message and the value proposition was high enough so people wanted to play. I think we were successful there. I, like I said, another team just signed up and I won't say who, I'll announce it, but it's a hammer expert team out of Southern California, I believe. A hammer expert team is coming out of Southern California. That's the 31st team. And the 32nd team, if they sign up, if they finish their sign up, it's gonna be a surprise. But I'm just gonna tell you, you guys are on the cutting edge. You guys are on the forefront. You guys are like going to the moon first. And we're going to change foosball, and you guys are the reason why. Wow. So thank wow. you for all that. Love yeah. that. Adam. Um, I'm just curious. Do any of you have any questions for myself yeah. or Mark or Tom? Not all at once. That's uh, okay. So I got one. So uh, because it's a monster format, then, of course, there's like the regular season rounds, and then there's a playoff. Every All four events have a playoff, right, with the top like eight or whatever teams. Correct or incorrect? We're trying, to, we're trying to figure out the singles. The six, um, a 64 person singles ending at an exact hour is going to take okay. a lot of work. So I don't want to overpromise how the okay. singles is going to work. And I don't want to also don't want to overpromise anything right now until we have it figured out. But our goal is to give you a definitive five or six qualifying rounds and all the doubles events. We don't know yet. Like I said, just give us a little bit of time to make sure we could um, oh. put it out there when we've worked out all the detail. But there will be multiple rounds in the doubles events uh, and then there will be playoffs in each of the doubles events okay cool wow. awesome any other questions anybody I'm yeah so you and brewer took all our money without having all this figured out 
No, no, we have it all. We have, <laughs> we, have everything, we have everything that needs to be figured out, figured out. Yes. I like That's that. What you need to know. Everything that needs to be figured out is figured out. Okay. Yeah, we still have time for uh, for any any other questions. Why do you think a beginner rookie has a chance of winning this? If I'm going to be very direct with you, um, you guys, a, a beginner rookie has a great chance to win the $200 uh, highest paying in a seven uh, yeah. packages. You have a, of course, there's four or five beginners competing for that, and maybe ten amateurs or whatever is competing for it. A rookie or beginner does have a great shot of taking in the top five if they can have some good draws and play out of their minds and the top five is still more money than you'll ever win at a, a a tour event do i think a rookie or an amateur can win the whole thing i could have won this when i was a rookie hands down i could have won this as a well, rookie there you go. so i guarantee you there's a rookie who, who can win mm. well i, I will mm. say that there are some massive threats there are some massive threats there i mean i just you just you got to be able to you, you got to be able to put it all together you got to get some great you got to be lucky because you got to get great draws, you got to play great when you have those great draws. When you have your opportunities as a forward, you got to you got to have a great tournament, an incredible tournament. And even then, it'll be hard, but it's worth the experience. And I'll say one last thing: if you if you want to get good at foosball and elevate your game, this is the this this is a rare opportunity to play with the kind of stress and the kind of duress and the kind of anxiety that you get in a pit match. When I had a girl playing in the '90s, I had to play in the pit match against Tom Spear and Robert Mars and Dave Gummison to get this type of experience. Or I was playing draw your partners for sixty bucks every Friday. That's all I would, would have been doing. This is an event for your level of player that's going to put that type of stress on you. So it's a very rare opportunity, and it sets you up to play against Tony and Brandon and Blake in a big match because you'll know what the stress is like. That's what you're paying for. Will there be certified uh, officials there? Um... Like, will we be able to get refs if we need it for, you know, for jarring if we think someone's uh, aggressive or whatever on the five, love stuff that. like that? Love that. Yeah. Hey, Mark, can I? Yeah, go. The idea of a certified ref is a selling point for IFP. We don't, IFP, we don't actually have those. Okay. It's not a thing in the States. There's no, there's no, uh, there's no board or anything that certifies refs. It's not, okay. it's not a thing. It's not like an ITSF. So there, there's refs at every tournament. Somebody will be able to, uh, there'll be pro masters at this tournament. Who are just there to hang out and watch? There's going to yeah. be plenty okay. of pros there who can help. So there will be. It'll be I easy to get a ref. You there will be not a problem if you need a ref. Tony will be. Tony will. Answer, Tony Spreadman will be there, and he'll he'll also judge matches. Cool. Cool. Wow. Love wait, that. What? what? Tony's cool. listening. Like, wait, what? What? <laughs> <laughs> whoa, 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 wait. Hold on. Uh, so uh, yeah, I like with, that question. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And with four minutes remaining, any any other great questions uh, you'd like to toss out there from our panel? Or bad questions. Or bad questions. Or con just comments. I what do you all question. think? Why did my oh. fifth grade teacher hate me so much? Because <laughs> you didn't go to Ren Fair. <laughs> Next. <laughs> oh. Well hey, you acted out and you're only interesting people act out. Guys, I have to say that this has been a, a, a such a great time. It's so much fun with uh, with these these uh, these gladiators that are heading to Florida for February 18th through the 21st uh, in Pompano Beach. What a what an, an extraordinary time it's going to be with Thunderdome. Uh, you know, of course, we want to thank Tommy and Luke for uh, for their time last week, and of course their uh, their efforts in putting on a great tournament. We're looking forward to the results, and can't wait to hear the play by play. Uh, I think that's going to be a, a highlight as well. So our thanks to uh, to Liz and to Maggie and to Rich and Keith and Bob and Ethan and, of course, Jimmy. Uh, we do appreciate you joining us with the Foos Talk Live tonight. Uh, before we go, Mark, your favorite movie. Uh, my favorite movie is probably Inception because I just I could, I could watch it over and over and Esoteric. over. Esoteric. Wow. Yeah. Adam? Yeah, it's easy. Oh, I don't I don't watch movies. <laughs> <laughs> Battlestar Galactica. There Bears beats Battlestar Galactica. Oh, uh, I, all right. Well, if I have to go on the record, I, I'd probably say hmm, the fifth element. Fifth element. Wow. Okay. Is that Bruce Willis, by the way? Fifth element? Yes. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, I, I will uh, conclude by saying that I have a tie for, for number one. Uh, well, it, it's either Godfather One or The Big Lebowski. Wow. Yeah. You do abide. Of course. I'm so I expected nice. Ben Hur or like 
<laughs> Something from like before, before yeah. the, the before Casa times. Blanca. <laughs> I'll have you know. Metropolis. Uh, so yeah. Sorry. That that. And, uh, anyways, that was yeah. a great answer, Tom. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate that. Well, anyway, you know, I had more time to think about it than anybody else. That's so, true. so this... except for me, I'm the only one who hadn't been asked. Yeah, yeah that's right. Clay. Favorite movie. All right, go ahead. Take it away. What now? <laughs> now you got a minute. What is it? What is your favorite I, movie? Minute's not enough. It's it's time. It's time to, to no, hit the no, 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 it's not. No, Come no, on. No, 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 no. What's your it's favorite time. movie? I'm not going to say that and then follow through. That was the joke, and, cool then, and then I'm going to moonwalk my way back I'll out I'll bet you here. it's Cool Hand Luke, isn't it? Next week we'll talk about my favorite movie. All right. All right. Never Man, heard. you know how to hurt a guy. Well, okay. Well, thanks to Clay. Twilight. I just promised that I was going to be here next week. And that's how I get treated. What the hell? Oh, oh man thank you everybody uh, for being here tonight yes. I, I truly appreciate because a lot of you i contacted and talked to just like a day some of you and maggie i apologize i totally realized it was like uh, almost midnight for you when i texted you and i'm on the west coast and i apologize and everybody else you're awesome thank you so much for spending your time with us this evening oh yeah really truly appreciate it and good luck to everybody going to fund dome it's going to be an amazing event and guys, oh, yeah yeah uh, thanks for everything yeah you're very welcome awesome, guys thank you and uh, Jim Stevens will be back with us next week, but uh, another edition of Foos Talk Live is, is only a week away. And thanks, you, thanks for tuning in tonight. Foos Talk Live is a product of Inside Foos, all rights reserved. Brought to you in part by InsideFoos.com, Protectoflex, Rodlock, 518 Prints, Foosballers the Movie, the USTSO, and Foosball Clubs USA. Tune in again next week for another episode of Foos Talk Live. In the meantime, we'll see you soon.